Welcome, welcome. Tuesday afternoon in a week that is just full of hundreds of questions. Some of them poor, some of them average, some of them good. Here's a pretty good question. From the 408, right on the Comcast Business text line. It says, serious question. Does Jimmy get his Captain C back or is Kyle still sticking with six? <laughs> I, good question. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. What if the leadership committee went into Kyle's office and said Jimmy should get his captaincy back? Uh, would he do it? I, 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 I don't know. We got a lot to get into today. Hi, Ray. Hi, Mom. Uh, you are a, a degenerate. And I'll throw Gamble in there just to be nice and kind of get into the no, direction of No, degenerate is fine. Um, in your entire history of degenerate gamble, uh, gambler living, have the 49ers made NFL history this week? I believe that they have. I mean, I have not done much research on this, but in the history of football, teams that lose starting quarterbacks don't normally see their Super Bowl odds increase in Las Vegas the same week, and that's exactly what happened. The 49ers went from 20 to 1 last week to 16 to 1 to win the big game this week, and I just can't imagine that that's ever happened before. I can't think of an example of uh, where that would happen. And you know they were they didn't Vegas didn't believe in Earl Morrill that 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 much to think like oh no. now now that uh, no but but Vegas react overreacts to 49er and forty nine er and Raider things more than any other two teams because there are more people who go there and bet we give them an awful lot of business so certainly. this is largely about the psychoses of forty nine er fans more than it is about. Vegas being weird. Oh, let's establish this right now. There is no line. There are no odds. There is no over-under that is ever trying to predict an outcome correctly. It's just trying to come up with a number that will generate as much possible interest on either side of said number. Yeah. That's all it is. But it's really, really something else. And things move quickly. I mean, if, if there is a lesson coming out of this past weekend, it's that things move very, very quickly. As a matter of fact, NFL Week 3... Begins in 48 hours, for goodness sakes. We've got a heck of a Thursday night game. Steelers and Browns coming up. A couple of really good games coming up in week three. And obviously, the San Francisco 49ers are going to be rolling into Denver with the nation's eyes as curiously affixed on the 49ers as they have been in a really long time. Like, I really wonder what makes people more interested nationally in the Niners. Seeing who Trey Lance was for the very first time, or seeing what Jimmy Garoppolo 3.0 might be. And since we are in the town that, you know, is built by tech, well, go, I guess the gold rush first, then tech. Um, what are we looking at? Jimmy Garoppolo 3.0. What do you think we're about to see from him? Do you think that there will be a better-than-before version of Jimmy Garoppolo, the same version of Jimmy Garoppolo, or might there be a regression and the worst version of Jimmy Garoppolo we've seen? You're going to see exactly this Jimmy Garoppolo you saw last year and the Jimmy Garoppolo you saw three years ago with the single exception of the New Orleans game when he inhabited somebody else's body and rolled up 49 points. Uh Jimmy Garoppolo was brought back because he is the familiar solution to the problem, what happens if Trey Lance goes wrong. So I think you're, you're going to see exactly what you've seen. You know, the, the offense is not going to be dramatically different. Uh, they're not all of a sudden going to try to reinvent the wheel. Um, they're going to go back to doing the things that they've been doing since he got here. So I, I can't imagine. I mean, that's the one thing about this that makes it more boring. It's that you've seen this party before, and you will see it again. I don't know if I could possibly call it boring, but... Repetitive, then. Yeah, okay, a return to what you're familiar with. It could very well be that. Or who knows? Who knows? Maybe, just maybe... Like, I, I've got so many questions. Like, yesterday's show was a little accusatory, a little looking for the blame game, and who's right, who's wrong, who messed up, who screwed up. Um, and by the way, the whole concept of can you run 
as a quarterback? Can you, th- you know, I want to bring it back to a phrase that we've all been using way too frequently in our sporting lives over the last few years. When I'm saying that Kyle's running his quarterback too much, I'm not, I don't mean never run a quarterback again, but load management. And Kyle was not concerned, or I should just say he was unbothered by the load management in a running game that Trey Lance was on pace to have. Obviously, you watched a little Monday Night Football last night. How about Jalen Hurts, right? I mean, there is your preeminent option quarterback functioning in the NFL right now. He had 11 rushes last night, two touchdowns. He threw for 333 yards as well, by the way, with a touchdown and an inter- interception. He's, a, he's electric. You know, someone was like, oh, look at how many times he is running with the football. What do you think of that, Damon? Well, here's what I think of it. I think he's an extraordinarily electric and talented guy who, by my naked eye, moves twice as fast as Trey Lance. He flies when he's out there. Um, and I, I will also say Jalen Hurts is probably out of the NFL in four or five seasons if he keeps on playing like that. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of the deal that Not only is he making with the devil, but the Eagles are making with the football devil. Because the Eagles, remember, did not trade multiple picks to find Jalen Hurts. They found Jalen Hurts in the second round at number 53 overall. So this is the ultimate rookie quarterback window for the Eagles. Where they look at it and they think to themselves, hey, we want to have as much success with this guy as possible. And the rookie structure of his contract allows us to build a big team around him and get him the receivers that he needs and some playmakers defensively. And we can absorb a lot of costs elsewhere thanks to his reduced cost on the roster. And the truth is he's a second round pick. And, you know, if he goes from he's our quarterback to not our quarterback, well, that's fine because we didn't create an abnormal entry point for him to join the team. So the Eagles can play a riskier game with a player who is built to play a riskier game than the 49ers can. Conversely, Josh Allen, he and the Buffalo Bills went out and just whooped that rear end last night, and he only ran the ball one time, which is probably the right thing for a quarterback that important to the future of that franchise to do in a game that you're moving the ball any way you want to anyway, so there's no read There's no reason to risk the load management of Josh Allen running in a game that's been decided since the coin toss, essentially. Well, more to the point, quarterbacks run when they don't think they have a throwing option. There are not that many teams that run that many designed runs for their quarterbacks, and Jalen Hurts is among those who doesn't get a lot of designed runs. He runs because he's still relatively young, and he's trying to figure out Who he's supposed to throw to. Uh, Josh Allen has been around for a while, and he's got guys who can catch the ball. I mean, you know, Stephon Diggs solves a lot of your running problems right there. Um, You know, just, I mean, they targeted him 14 times. He He had a huge night. You know, Dawson Knox is a borderline elite tight end. Um, and they, they didn't have to run the ball that much. You know, they, they got up in the second half, and they just said, you know what? We don't need to risk him. In fact, they brought in Case Keenum for the last, uh, I want to say the last couple of series. Might have just been one, but, you know, the the one thing I will give Sean McDermott credit for is that what Josh Allen was when he got here was a guy who, when in doubt, would put the ball under his arm and just start looking for contact. I think he's sort of weaning him off of that. You know, built a better offensive line in front of him. Uh, a running game. I mean, Devin Singletary was, you know, having his way. Coach him up. Yeah. So, well, That's it. Yeah. Coach him up. Well, roster him up, really, more like. I mean, Stefan Diggs changed everything about Josh Allen. Everything about him. Because he's one of those guys who will catch anything you throw at him, even if you bounce it to him. He'll still figure out a way to catch it. We're brought to you by BMW Fairfield, now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Since opening their doors last July, BMW Fairfield has become the top-rated BMW dealer in the Bay Area, not by volume, not by sales, but by you, the good people. Your own reviews have them as the top-rated BMW dealer in the Bay Area. You can visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. So the San Francisco 49ers have had a quarterbacking problem since the day Kyle Shanahan arrived 
And there have been a couple, hey, we think we've solved it. Hey, we think we've solved it again. Now, there hasn't been a solution all the way to winning a Super Bowl, right? I mean, we haven't seen that. Where are they in this overall arc of Kyle Shanahan has a quarterbacking problem? And last night, there was a really good question that was asked in Monday Night Countdown. And what do you know? It was asked by former 49er quarterback Steve Young. A very relevant question that I think I might have the answer to. I beg that Kyle and Jimmy have a conversation that I don't know this has been had yet, where Jimmy goes in and says, Kyle, clearly you got you fired me. I wasn't doing something you wanted me to do. What can I do to become a better football player? What have I not done that has kept me from getting you winning you over? Because the fans and everyone else can win. But then where is the, the Kyle somehow if they've done that many iterations and Ky, Jimmy can't be that guy? Is that what Kyle's decided? He can't be that guy, and so we're going to get rid of him because he can't be. Or is there something that Jimmy can do? Can he be the first one in and the last one out? Can he? Is there some? Stu, is there sunny stub at study habits? Is there something else that can step function Jimmy's ability? to win over Kyle Shanahan. The question there Steve Young poses is, Kyle, why did you fire me? That would be Jimmy's question. I think I have the answer. Why did Kyle want to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo in the first place? There are a couple of reasons, but I think I have found the main one. And I will share that with you next here on 95.7 The Game. It's Damon, it's Ratto. The main reason why Kyle decided he was done with Garoppolo, and what do you know, no one's done with Garoppolo. Not yet, not around here anyways. When you're happy to know it in San Diego, you officially know it by going down there and basking in the endless sunshine, coastline, and outdoor adventures. If you're planning a trip to San Diego today, make sure you check out sandiego.org. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately, like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this then? Mm. It sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity gateway. Everything, our farm, our stand, our pop-up shop, it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local, raw honey for our family. And then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC and WePay Inc. Subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. The following is an attorney advertisement. If you get sidelined by a workplace injury, the workers' compensation attorneys at Boxer and Durson can help get you back in the game. Our team of skilled attorneys will fight by your side for the treatment and compensation you deserve. We care about justice for injured workers. That's what makes us Northern California's premier workers' comp law firm. Call Boxer and Gerson at 510-345-2341 or visit BoxerLaw.com for a free consultation. Boxer and Gerson, your life is worth the fight. 
If you own a business, this has been a bumpy ride. From pandemic to inflation, I'm sure you could use a break. If your business has five or more employees and survived COVID, you may be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. Hi, I'm Howard Mackler, and that's why I founded GetRefunds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money. The team of tax attorneys we have put together are highly trained in this little-known payroll tax refund program. We do all the work, charge not a dime up front, and simply share a percentage of the cash that we get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those that took PPP, nonprofits, and even those that had increases in sales. We have helped return over a billion dollars to businesses, and we can help you too. Just go to GetRefunds.com, click on Qualify Me, and answer a few questions. This payroll tax refund is only available for a limited period of time. Don't lose out on up to $26,000 per employee. Go to GetRefunds.com. That's GetRefunds.com. The Golf Mart, home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving Northern California golfers for over 30 years. Come into Friedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill, September 23rd through September 25th for their fall clearance sale event. Take advantage of factory direct prices, one-of-a-kind opportunities, special pricing on floor models, and convenient financing. And save on new appliances from trusted brands like Mila, Bosch, Electrolux, LG, and Maytag. Visit Freeman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill for their fall clearance sale event, September 23rd through September 25th, for the best time to save on new appliances for your home. Dell Technologies semi-annual sale has arrived and it's time to upgrade to the latest business technology. Save big on laptops and desktops with Windows 11 Pro. Plus get amazing deals on server, storage and cloud solutions as well as top work accessories including docks, monitors and more. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL for special business offers during our semi-annual sale. Wireless headphones. That'll be $200. I'll use my Capital One Quicksilver card. Now that's a hit. You used the Capital One Quicksilver card, which makes you the hero of every purchase. With Quicksilver, you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. I wanted running music, but unlimited 1.5% cash back is pretty heroic. Good instincts. Every hero needs a theme song. The Capital One Quicksilver card. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. You're the one who protects the flock, and that requires an eye for detail. Because when safety and well-being are on the line, it's the details that can save lives. Even when no one else is watching, you see everything. Granger gets you, and we're here for you. And all the ones who get it done with a wide range of safety products and solutions. Plus board-certified safety consultants here to answer your questions. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. It's time to say goodnight to that check engine light with the free AutoZone Fix Finder service. It'll help troubleshoot the likely cause of your light for free so you can drive with peace of mind. Restrictions apply. Now back to Damon and Ratto on 95.7 The Game. Brought to you by BMW Fairfield. Now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit. What is going on? It's great to have you here on a Tuesday. Damon Bruce, Ray Ratto, and believe it or not, they actually put this, this thing someplace where you could watch it. I don't know why you'd want to, but there it is. You can find us on Twitch. You can find us on YouTube. And you can bask in the glory that is two men sitting in front of microphones. Uh, the one cool thing, though, about you know the YouTube broadcast is because there's the chat on the side. And you can actually see people's names. Like, hello, Matthew. Hello, City Lock. Hello, Mojo SF. Hello, Otis Bird III. Hello, Fernando Sosa, which is officially the sexiest name up there right now. It's better than saying, so someone from the 408, someone from the 510, someone from the 415. I like to identify people, Ray. That way we know who to hold accountable. Shout out that YouTube chat. Look at that. Everyone's saying, wow. Wow. See, I, I see you. I see you all. Keeping tabs on all of you. See who goes on the good listener list. See who goes on the hate list. I have good news. All of you are on Ray's hate list. 
All of you. Not hate. Ignore. Oh. Hatred takes energy. Just pure ambivalence. Just, yeah. Exist, don't exist. Just leave me out of it. Why do you think, more than anything else, Kyle Shanahan wanted to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo? I think he wanted a, I think he wanted a more diversified offense. I think it was a football decision more than anything else. I think I need a guy who can allow me to stretch the field so that I can run the ball more efficiently. I like the fact that some teams can put up 40. I'm not one of those guys. I'd like to be one of those guys. And Jimmy Garoppolo, for all his benefits, can't do that for me. I think it was just, that was strictly a football decision more than anything else. I don't think there was anything underhanded or mean-spirited about it. It was just, I want more than I've got. Yeah, I mean, I totally believe you. It wasn't underhanded. It wasn't mean-spirited. It wasn't because their personalities didn't align. It wasn't because he was hard to reach in the offseason or didn't return phone calls or text messages to the coach, the front office, or George Kittle. I, I don't think it was any of that. And honestly, the other element to it that I do think plays a role, it's durability. Not, it, it, it's not the definitive reason why he's moved on or wanted to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo and now finds himself incapable of moving on from Jimmy Garoppolo because he's a starting quarterback once again. Ray, I think I got it. I mean, if we had to boil it down to one specific thing, I, I do agree with you. He's looking for a more dynamic offense. But I think he's looking for a more dynamic offense specifically, specifically in fourth quarters of playoff games. Jimmy Garoppolo has appeared in six career playoff games with the Niners, and in his fourth quarters, zero touchdowns, three interceptions, and a passer rating of 28. Ray, you get a passer rating of 39.6 for just spiking a football. Just spiking a football gets you a passer rating of 39.6. Jimmy, six career playoff fourth quarters, his average passing rating is 28. In other words, spiking the ball in every fourth quarter pass would have made the 49ers better in those four quarters than actually asking Jimmy to drop back and throw it forward. And that, more than any other reason, is why Kyle Shanahan broke faith and lost trust in Jimmy Garoppolo. I think more than anything else, like if you had to, so, you know, n not painting with a big, broad brush, specifically, what was the breaking point? Again, I want to go back to last night, Monday Night Football Countdown. Steve Young asked this question and talked about a conversation he imagines Kyle and Jimmy either need to have or have had. I beg that Kyle and Jimmy have a conversation that I don't know that has been had yet, where Jimmy goes in and says, Kyle, clearly you, got, you fired me. I wasn't doing something you wanted me to do. What can I do? To become a better football player. What have I not done that has kept me from getting you winning you over? Because the can't fans and the going to Yeah, but, but, but then where is the, the Kyle? Somehow, if they've done that many iterations, and Ky, Jimmy can't be that guy, is that what Kyle's decided? He can't be that guy, and so we're going to get rid of him because he can't be. Or is there something that Jimmy can do? Can he be the first one in and the last one out? Can he? Is there some? Stu, is there sunny stub at study habits? Is there something else that can step function Jimmy's ability? to win over Kyle Shanahan. It wasn't work ethic. It wasn't lost faith in. It wasn't didn't believe or trust in. It's pure production from a quarterback when you need your quarterback to produce the most. And the, uh, the, the official arena of I need my quarterback to produce the most is the fourth quarter of playoff games. I think it's just physical limitation. I don't think Kyle Shanahan looks at things that way i mean it's part of the greater equation of i'd like to be a more complete offense so it's harder for teams to defend me i'm tired of facing eight in the box i think it was just basically schematics you know i don't think he looked at the fourth quarter and said that's not acceptable because they're they're a pretty good team in the fourth quarter by and large not because, in playoff games well 
But that's where ten point leads go to die, Ray. Okay, but those are te- that those are designed. You know, the four nineers are designed to have a lead in the fourth quarter, and to hold it with defense and running. Now, to the extent that he might want to change that, I mean, that's simply a, a it's a physical deficiency that they don't see in Garoppolo. It's not like he can get better at the thing they're talking about. He has a limitation. He's not a guy who can stretch the field. He's precise. He doesn't screw things up. Sometimes he'll get a little giddy throwing the ball into a tight uh, tight spot that you know maybe he doesn't have the arm to do. But I think that's it. And I think that's why he looked at Trey Lance and he saw his arm and said, that guy can do the thing I want. I'll just coach him up in the other ways. The problem seems to be that Lance hasn't done enough of anything yet to be able to change that dynamic. And I think as long as that's true, um, Shanahan's just going to go back to the thing he's most familiar with. I mean, I don't believe for a moment... Well, Shanahan can't get any credit for any decision here. This was forced upon him. uh, No, I... uh, Well, which... What which are you, what are you talking about? The fact that Garoppolo's back in? I'm going to say even a little bit of both. Certainly, elevating him to number one on the quarterback depth chart, that was a decision that was made for Kyle Shanahan. And in a really weird way, so was the decision that Jimmy was still a 49er. Like, I don't look, think it was forced about, upon him at all. Oh, no, think- no. Forced upon, forced upon him may be the wrong way to say it. But had Kyle had his druthers... Jimmy's on another team. But, well, that, uh, oh, that I, I'll agree with you there. Right. Had Kyle had his wish list actually ticked off by the universe, Jimmy being on another roster is a reality. So he can't get any credit assigned to him for turning back to Jimmy when Jimmy was turned back to him first. No, the credit he gets, and I, don't, I hesitate to use the word credit because it's just circumstances changed, is that having been unable to move him, he got off his ego long enough to say, okay, if I can't get rid of you and you're the best option I got, then I'll swallow whatever I have to swallow and bring you back. Because Nate Sudfeld clearly wasn't any kind of an answer and clearly neither is Brock Purdy. I mean, the, the, the thing is, he, he made the gamble of entrusting a Super Bowl contending team to a quarterback with literally no resume. Not just, you know, two starts, not just reps in practice, no resume at all, and thought it could work. That's the gamble, and that's the gamble that so far has not paid off. So to the extent that this is about credit, which I don't even believe it is, this is about Kyle Shanahan going, I'm not going to go look for another quarterback in a market that's incredibly depressed when I've got this guy. I didn't want this guy, but I still got him. Through any number of different circumstances, I still got him. So now that I gotta use him, I'm gonna use him. So it's not about it's not really about credit. It just I, I I was saying yesterday it was a land of, you know, accidents. Circumstances. Yeah, just you know, stuff goofy stuff happened over and over and over again exacerbated by the fact that Kyle Shanahan wanted to try to thread a needle that didn't have an eye in it. And now he's got what he had last year. So he's going to have to be what they were last year. And it might frustrate him in the long term, but I've said this before. There is no long term when the season's going on. There's just 18 weeks. That's it. Nothing about the future matters. It's get through next week get through the week after that, the week after that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until the second week of February. 888-957-9570. What do you think is the number one reason? I'm talking top of the list. The number one reason why Shanahan really broke trust with Jimmy Garoppolo. I mean, to think about it, again, Monday Night Football crew framed it like this last night. Garoppolo was fired. That's the truth when you think about it. I mean, the 49ers fired this guy. 
and he's still running the office. You mentioned all the growth yes. that Trey Lance still has to go through Correct. to get to where he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Garoppolo is there. Yes. And he's where, though? Yeah, but he's yeah, not. Well, Jimmy Garoppolo got fired from this job. Exactly. Kyle Shanahan had all the time in the world to be with Jimmy Garoppolo. He said, you know what? I'm firing he, you. He, he got fired from the job because of they spent so much draft capital drafting a guy number three. He didn't get fired from the job because they, the guy behind him was a better quarterback. Well, Bullock, they, they got all those draft picks and, and went to go get Trey Lance because they were trying to make that transition like an Alex Smith to a Patrick Mahomes. The reason that they wanted Trey Lance to be in this position was because they have a great defense. They know they're going to have a really good running game and they have weapons on the perimeter. Him learning on the job was going to be easier for him this year in their championship window. Jimmy Garoppolo just went out there and looked like Jimmy Garoppolo. They know they're going to have to win it for him. There's a good point being made there, too. You know, is Jimmy now along for the ride, or is he going to actually play a little different, knowing that, hey, man, I'm on borrowed time now. And, like, what Kyle wants? Well, let me tell you what Kyle wants. Kyle wanted me out of here. So maybe I'm not going to genuflect to every single one of his walking orders every single time he sends a play into the huddle. If there's something else I want to do, I'm going to do it. If I'm going to risk the ball a little bit more, if I'm going to throw the ball downfield a little bit more, what, what do you? What's what's the recourse? You put Brock Purdy in the game? Like I freaking dare you, Kyle. He's so, not, but he's not that guy. It's been established again and again. He's a, he's he a guy. hasn't been that guy. I'm wondering if that see, guy might be. I don't see any reason a, why he would change now. What's he got to lose? What's he got, if he thinks playing this way was enough to get him to lose his job? Why not start auditioning for other teams and let me show you what I can actually do here. Independent of Kyle's conservative wishes, I'm going to be a little bit more aggressive. Again, that's kind of what I picked up from his Sunday post-game comment where he basically said, yeah, I felt like 2017 Jimmy again. I had just gotten here. I was really aggressive. And then we've become more conservative since then, so we really don't do it like that anymore. Maybe Jimmy's going to go back to doing it like that now if he can. I, I think it's going to be fascinating to watch if there is a difference. Is this new and improved Jimmy? Same old, same old Jimmy? Or actually, there's going to be a regression in Jimmy Garoppolo. Let me tell you what we got coming up besides your phone calls here in just a matter of minutes. We've got Tim Kuhn joining us. He wrote a very interesting cover story on ESPN.com today with Nick Wagner. Uh, a heartfelt goodbye and a shocking reunion, how Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers came together again. It's a story that we already know well. I mean, we've been sitting on top of it, but there are some very interesting details that he uncovered. And like any writer, I'm sure there might be a detail or two that didn't even make the piece. And so that's why Tim Kuhn will be joining us in just a little bit. No, oh, by the way, uh, Peter King, the biggest NFL journalist in the world, uh, will be joining us at 445 today. Uh, hopefully he can bring his cell phone as close to a screaming ambulance siren as possible. Seems to be part of our conversations on a weekly basis. You just don't like the urban feel. Oh, I love the urban feel. It's, it's I'm like my cousin Vinny. I sleep better with the with the, with, the, with the sirens and the and huh? and and, and, the, and the chains rattling than I do in a peaceful forest. Maybe he can get a gunshot from outside. Hey, the, hey you know, think about how exciting. Uh, that interview will be. Uh, we're brought to you by BMW Fairfield, now open in the Fairfield Auto Mall. Over 400 Google reviews cannot be wrong. They're sitting at a 4.8, making you turning them into the number one reviewed Google uh, being your master. Uh, BMW dealership in all of Northern California. Visit BMWFairfield.com today to book your visit and find out why. Uh, we'd take some phone calls. Patrick in Stockton. Thank you very much for the call, Patrick. You're on with Damon and Ratto. What's going on? Damon, Ray, it's a pleasure to talk to you guys again. Damon, I'm, I'm a little baffled at something you just said a little earlier. Um, going, going back to the, to the game last night with, with, with Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts played as perfect a football game as I've seen anybody play in a long time. As a matter of fact, they showed Michael Vick's greatest game stat-wise where Vick had 333 yards passing and and uh, three touchdown passes and two rushing touchdowns. And it was extremely eerie and similar to what I saw last night. And the reason he was able to, he was accurate as hell. He was 10 for 10, I think, 
or 11 for 11 before he had his first incompletion. And the reason he was able to, I mean, his receivers were wide open because they were putting eight guys in the box, which I thought was ridiculous early by Minnesota, and they seemed to never make the adjustment defensively. But I just saw Josh Allen two weeks ago look like he was playing in 1940. Only thing he was missing was a leather helmet. <laughs> and I didn't hear you say anything about that. Now, they scaled his running back, obviously, last night. Last night, he only had one rushing attempt, they yeah. Didn't, he didn't, they didn't need it. But, man, what I saw last night from Jalen Hurts was incredible. Oh, he's but fantastic. One last I, thing. Yeah, no, I, Patrick, I, I, I called him. He's the preeminent option quarterback that has maybe played in the NFL in years. He is fantastic. He is grease lightning when he's running with the ball, and there is a threat of him taking off that keeps guys closer to the line of scrimmage, which, you're right, opens up guys downfield. Uh, Jalen Hurts is such a good passer at the same time, though. Nick Sirianni's job is to make sure he runs less and throws more because Jalen Hurts is no longer a, yeah, you know, we're going to draft him in the second round, and after we move on from Carson Wentz, we'll see if he can get the job. Like, this kid can officially play. Like <laughs> He's good. So watch him now evolve. And I think that that's any NFL team wants to evolve their quarterback to play a style that invites less chance of being hurt in a game where, look, we all know you can get hurt anywhere. I, where'd he go? Is Patrick still with us? Yes. Hey, hey, hey Patrick. I'm here. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, one last thing, Damon, as a Niners fan, the Niners are flawed, man. Um, when it comes to this running game and and Shanahan wants to run the ball, I understand that. But let's take a real look at something. Man, the 49ers hadn't had a 1,000-yard running back since 2014. And we're doing it with they're trying to they're trying to run the ball and establish fun and be elite with a bunch of just guys at running back. I mean, we can get away with that. We get away with that, and we and we're it's, it's really similar and eerie to the Jimmy G thing. We win with power running and 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 um, very interesting running play calling throughout the season, and a, and a very good defense. But when we get into a real real football game, it's highly questionable because if the running game is stymied. And then we have to rely on quarterback, regardless of right. who it is, I, yeah. mainly Jimmy G. Then all of a sudden, it could become a problem because now we're relying on Jimmy G and we're putting Jimmy G out of his element. Well, and, and Patrick, th thank you so much for the call, man. I really appreciate it. you got a great voice, by the way. I never like taking calls from a guy who's got a better voice than both hosts. Um, <laughs> you could do your own show. Uh, Patrick... Uh, Bill Belichick has a saying. He always wants to make his opponent play left-handed. And that means I want him to go away from their strength and play into an arena that they're less comfortable playing in. And shutting down the 49ers running game invites the quarterback into the level of offense that maybe Jimmy can't sustain. Maybe Trey Lance can't sustain it. I mean, when the 49ers running game shuts down, that's a game that they usually lose, right? So, I don't I don't know if Trey Lance is going to represent the guy who can, if your running game is shut down, you can then you know, go to the air, start attacking everyone that way. I don't even know if, if Jimmy represents that guy. I, he, I, I, we think we know what Jimmy is because we've seen so much of him. I mean, Trey Lance, you know, I can't even tell you that the jury's still out. We're in pre-trial diversion. We're kicking his court case down the road months and months and months and months. We don't even know. So will he be that guy? Can he be that guy? It's a question that I'm sure he would like the answer to, and Kyle Shanahan and every 49er fan as well. But that's the thing is people have been invested in the concept of Trey Lance since the day he was drafted. And yet nothing has, has resulted from it. Um, because Kyle Shanahan rightly concluded last year that Trey Lance wasn't going to carry them to the best record they could have 
in the season they were in. He thought that with an off season and a training camp, that he could hit the that he had he could hit the ground running with Trey Lance. The first game, they played on a lake. Second game, he was hurt. Thirteen minutes into the game, or seventeen minutes into the game, um, and that was it. So, you know, Kyle Shanahan is adapting to conditions not of his own making. And it's not about whether he gets credit or not. I don't understand that whole argument. It's trying to get through the season in a place where you can say, we have a shot to win it all. Well, and, and here's the, the thing. Is, I think Jimmy's a regular season quarterback. The problem is in the playoffs. You well, know? maybe, so, but, you know, that's who they got now. Well, and in the playoffs, you start running into the teams that make you play left-handed. And yet... They go to the Super Bowl last year if the Joukowsky tart doesn't drop an interception. I mean, they're that close. It's not like they're a miserable failure in the postseason. I mean, they've had two pretty deep runs. One with a team that should have made a deep run, and one that probably shouldn't have. So, they're, if anything, they're slightly overachieving. You know, maybe Kyle Shanahan is looking for the perfect offense. And maybe his decision to choose Trey Lance means, no, you've actually made it sideways. So, I mean, because we don't know. All we know is now there are no more choices to be made. This is the deal you've got. Play the hand you've dealt yourself. This is the hand. We have an awful lot to get into. Tim Kuhn of ESPN joins us next. More of your calls after that. You know what we're talking about. Peter King joins us to talk about it, too, at 445 today. Damon and Ratto on 95.7 The Game. We're brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full-service banking, no compromises. Talk saves lives. Join us for Odyssey's I'm Listening Special, our annual two-hour national mental health conversation, Wednesday, September 21st at 6 p.m. You'll hear from Drew Robinson, whose story is one you have to hear. Former Heisman Trophy winner Ricky Williams will also join us to talk about his struggles. The two-hour special is a constructive and supportive conversation about our mental wellness. I'm Listening, Wednesday, September 21st, starting at 6 p.m., right here on 95.7 The Game and on the free odyssey app for more visit i'm listening.org remember talk saves lives why spend hours negotiating with a car salesman to get the best price for a vehicle you want to buy at bmw of fairfield we give you our very best most competitive price right up front by eliminating the price negotiation process we create a comfortable environment that helps our guests enjoy an experience that's often hostile and difficult at other dealerships there is a better way Experience it for yourself at BMW of Fairfield. One price, one person, one hour. Are you ready for your palm reading, my dear? Yeah, let's do this. I sense that you crave something. More reliable. Right. You know you deserve better and want out of a relationship. Yes, with my big name wireless carrier. You're who now? My big name wireless carrier. That's why I switched to Xfinity Mobile. Now I get unlimited with 5G for $30 per month on the most reliable 5G network. Uh, let's talk about your aura. It's so... And get this. They can even save you hundreds a year on your wireless bill over T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Yep, but you already knew that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I definitely saw this coming. Start seeing savings today. Switch to the fastest mobile service, Xfinity Mobile. Now with the best price on two lines of unlimited, just $30 a line per month. Switch today. Xfinity Internet required. Price comparison for two unlimited lines under available 5G pricing plans of top three carriers. Taxes and fees extra. Reduced speeds up to 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Most reliable based on root metrics, US report, Comcast analysis of mobile Wi-Fi, and cellular data from Ookla Speed Test Intelligence Q2 2022. If you own a business, this has been a bumpy ride. From pandemic to inflation, I'm sure you could use a break. If your business has five or more employees and survived COVID, you might be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. Hi, I'm Howard Mackler, and that's why I founded Get Refund. Funds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money. The team of tax attorneys we have put together are highly trained in this little-known payroll tax refund program. We do all the work, charge not a dime up front, and simply share a percentage of the cash that we get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those that took PPP, nonprofits, and even those that increases in sales. We have helped return over a billion dollars to businesses, and we can help you too. Just go to getrefunds.com/sports. 
click on Qualify Me and answer a few questions. This payroll tax refund is only available for a limited period of time. Don't lose out on up to $26,000 per employee. Go to GetRefunds.com slash sports. That's GetRefunds.com slash sports. The gamer, the call maker, the experience chaser. What if you could be everything all at once? Galaxy Z Fold 4 is powered by the Snapdragon processor for world-class performance and lightning-fast speed to turbocharge your multitasking. How about an expansive edge-to-edge -edge screen for immersive gaming, hands-free video calls with flex mode, and multi-window view to use up to three apps at the same time? With Galaxy Z Fold 4, do more with ease and make multitasking a breeze. Available now at Samsung.com. It's the bottom of the ninth, the game's on the line, and your small business needs a loan fast. What's your move? Go to OnDeck.com, America's largest online small business lender. With OnDeck, you can apply in minutes, and if approved, get your funds as soon as the same day. Go to OnDeck.com. Your loan is on deck. Depending on certain loan attributes, your business loan may be issued by OnDeck or Celtic Bank, a Utah Chartered Industrial Bank member FDIC. Limited eligibility for same-day funding. OnDeck does not lend in every state. All loans subject to lender approval. Oh, 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 O'Reilly! O'Reilly Auto Parts is here to keep your car on the road with our free loaner tool program. Your local store has more than 80 specialty tools available to rent for your next repair. Refundable deposit required. Ask our professional parts people about the loaner tool program today at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or visit o'reillyauto.com oh 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 o'reilly auto parts how's your mental health i'm listening with michael phelps you know, I think for me in, in 2014, when I found myself in that dark, dark place where I, I didn't want to be alive in those four days when I was in my room by myself, I wanted to find a different way. I wanted to find a different answer. Um, I was sick and tired of feeling how I felt. And that, that's why I started to seek help. And, and, and that's when I checked myself into a treatment center. Join us for Odyssey's I'm Listening to Our National Mental Health Conversation, Wednesday, September 21st at 6 p.m. Talk saves lives. Dell Technologies' semi-annual sale has arrived, and it's time to upgrade to the latest business technology. Save big on laptops and desktops with Windows 11 Pro. Plus, get amazing deals on server, storage, and cloud solutions, as well as top work accessories, including docks, monitors, and more. Dell Technologies recommends Windows 11 Pro for business. Call a Dell Technologies advisor at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL for special business offers during our semi-annual sale. Man, I slept. New z Pure Z's Restorative Herbal Sleep is made for people who are tired of being tired. I've never slept like this before. I've never woken up like this before. A melatonin-free sleep aid made with a botanical blend that contains clinically studied and effective valerian root, hops, and passion flower, shown to help promote better restorative sleep. z Pure Z's Restorative Herbal Sleep. Sleep this good, feel this good. Available at retailers near you. Now back to Damon and Ratto, brought to you by BMW Fairfield on 95.7 The Game. Well, I'm sure there's an awful lot of 49er fans who woke up this morning, hopped on ESPN.com and saw a cover story about Jimmy Garoppolo, a heartfelt goodbye and a shocking reunion written by Tim Kuhn and Nick Wagner. And Tim Kuhn is nice enough to join us here on 95.7 The Game to talk about a interesting piece, which, you know, got around a lot of stuff that we've been focused on so some of it we knew some very interesting details in there that we did not know so tim thank you very much for joining us here on damon and ratto um appreciate your time this afternoon how are you i'm good thank you guys for having me from all the conversations that you had with the team in the locker room how strong of a sell job did the 49ers actually have to make to Jimmy Garoppolo to return as a backup quarterback, or did circumstances almost create a world where Jimmy was hoping that might happen? I think by the time it happened, it had uh, gotten to the point where both sides, or, or at least Garoppolo's side, really understood that there wasn't a whole lot out there for them other than a release and then maybe a signing from a team like Cleveland where he would play, you know, part of the season and then end up having to give the job to Deshaun Watson. Um, obviously, it would have meant another, a new contract. It would have been, there were a lot of 
unknowns there once the trade market for Jimmy died. So I think that, you know, once the exhibition season ended without a clear opening anywhere, I, I think it became sort of a, you know, kind of an angle of repose thing, right? Like it became the easy, the easiest thing to do is stay where it's familiar um, and see what happens. And as we know, things happen. Turn your mic on, Ray. You know, the this, this segment always goes better when you turn your mic on. It actually goes worse when I turn it on, and you know that. Um, how much that. does Garoppolo bear responsibility for the market drying up? Um, you know, sh- sh- based on your reporting, do you get a sense that he or the 49ers feel like he should have gotten the surgery earlier? Or do they sort of accept that? You know, when it's a quarterback, you want to see if you can work it out without getting cut on. I think my reporting and the conversations I've had indicates that the 49ers would have preferred he not have it at all. You know, I think that was kind of the the idea was, hey, we, you know, we can trade you now and then you can deal with it when you're, when you're not our problem. I mean, that's just kind of the way it, I think it, it it shook out. And I think that Garoppolo and his people had to, you know, make the calculation that, they didn't want him being traded as damaged goods and they didn't want to have to tell people he was healthy if they weren't sure he was healthy. And once, you know, he gave it a roughly a month to try to get it rehabbed without surgery. And when, when things didn't progress the way they expected or wanted, then it was kind of a no brainer from his side. Now the 49ers obviously would have been in a position to get something uh, for him had had that not happened when it did, because that is the the moment when the trade market really died was when he, when he had surgery, Um, you know, and it's just bizarre how things happened where now, you know, they're all, they're all probably glad that it happened the way it did given, given what happened on Sunday. Tim Kuhn from ESPN here on 95, seven, the game, you mentioned that he was close to becoming a Washington commander. Did you get any sense of what that trade package might have been? No, I didn't, except that, you know, at the time it was it was widely kind of accepted that the 49ers were looking for two second-round draft picks, um, which I think probably would have been a really decent haul, especially from, from Washington. Um, so, yeah, that, that, was, that was the talk, that, that, that was what they were – uh, demanding or at least requesting. So I think it's probably safe to say it would have been something in that range. Um, that said, when the surgery came out, there was no interest in him at all, as I understand it, from anyone under any circumstances. How hard did Don Yee try to create a trade, or did he just recognize that there just wasn't a market and in all likelihood they were going to take the seven million dollar buyout and just have the year off yeah i think that that was probably where they were at that point because they they were the ones who were also involved in the discussion to have surgery you know jimmy jimmy consulted with them and and it was it was decided that hey the best thing going forward was to have the surgery and there was even a thought that, okay, this just might be a lost year, right? Your trade market, your trade market's gone. Uh, they're going to release you. Then you're going to be free to decide if you want to go somewhere, right? I mean, it was no, I mean, he would have chosen to go somewhere, but who knows what kind of situation he would have been dropped in. Um, and a lot of what they were doing was, was thinking about next year, you know, that you, you sort of let your body heal, you let your reputation heal. Um, you know, look what, I mean, Mitchell Trubisky is a perfect example. He goes from just being pilloried in Chicago to spending a year backing up Josh Allen. And all of a sudden he's, you know, a reasonably hot commodity again. He's a starting quarterback and that probably won't last forever, but you know what I'm saying? There's a, there's a, there was a thought there that, that they could position Jimmy well for 2023 if nothing happened immediately. Brian Greasy, who's a first-year quarterbacks coach, has got enough on his plate just being a first-year quarterbacks coach. For him having to also be an armchair psychologist to manage egos in his quarterbacking room and the very odd relationship that Lance and Garoppolo now share, it's an awful lot. I, I was, did you get to talk to 
did you get to talk to Greasy specifically for this piece? No, I did not speak um, specifically. Now, my my co writer on this, Nick Wagner, has a relationship with Brian, but it's it was uh, so he had he had talked to him o- over time. But there's a there was we we did not speak to him specifically for this story in the last week. Were the 49ers um, obstructionist when you tried to get to talk to people just because it was such a hot button topic at that point? Uh, they were not overly helpful, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so I would say that any anyone outside the locker room was difficult. You know, the locker room you could you could get guys as you as you see them. Um, there was no obstructionism there, but. Yeah, there were there were some people that you know I watched. I was in Chicago for the for the for the first game and and watched Garoppolo on the sidelines and saw uh, Clay Kubiak, who's the assistant quarterbacks coach. He was like with those two with Lance and Garoppolo every second off the when the, the offense wasn't on the field. You know, I had I had gotten information that he had hosted a quarterbacks dinner the night uh, all this stuff shook out with the roster construction and Jimmy returning. Uh, you know, I wanted to talk to him because he seems like the the guy on the field with the most contact. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's the assistant coaches apparently don't don't talk. So that was <laughs> that was that I ran into a roadblock there. I would have I would have liked to have heard his insight. Tim Kuhn from ESPN dot com here on ninety five seven The Game talking about the cover story, the piece about Garoppolo returning to the 49ers after it looked like the divorce was all but certain here we are getting married once again and really i mean tim i don't know how much you dove into this just thinking what a story to tell from a sports talk standpoint it's like we've been handed gold i mean there's just so much to talk about because this topic is just so original and different and i mean no matter how you look at it coming or going there's something fascinating to talk about you you mentioned how you know, if if Jimmy was this team's backup, he seemed reticent to play that role. He's been such a pro. I'm sure he would have played it very well. I'm sure he would have done everything he could to look like he, and, and actually not just look like, but be a supportive backup quarterback, imparting a little advice to the young kid. Uh, I think he would have done all those things. But then, you know, a football season and human nature does take over. And if there were an element to struggling of Trey Lance in a multiverse, you know, we're, we're doing all our Marvel, Marvel movies take place in the multiverse. I would have loved Tim to have seen the multiverse where Trey Lance is playing, struggling, and all of a sudden, you know, the games are running through the hourglass like grains of sand, uh, grains of sand. And would Kyle Shanahan have made a move? Or would he stuck with his convictions of Trey Lance? There's the multiverse movie that I would have loved to also have seen. Yeah, and all that is is part of this whole, as you say, the, the, the weirdness of the 49ers putting themselves in this position, right? They, they knew what it entailed. Um, I will say that, Everyone I spoke to, and, and this was before, you know, this was after, before and after the first game, everyone I spoke to really thought Jimmy was, actually was embracing this role. Like the guys that, that, that were on scout team, I mean, they were joking about him trying to be Justin Fields last week, and it was, you know, that, there was some humor involved in that. But, but they said he was just, he was all out. Like he, this was his thing. He, he, he really genuinely likes Lance. They have a good relationship. You know, I don't think he would have been back if that hadn't been the case. If he, if they didn't like each other, I think it would have been hard for the 49ers to sell this from either side, right? From, from the Garoppolo side or the team side. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, this is a team that their, their window is, is like right now, right? I mean, they, they feel like they have a roster. Um, really aside from the quarterback position, and you can argue that maybe it's, it's different now that they're more equipped to make a long run in the playoffs with Jimmy than, than Trey. But I mean, I, I think I, you know, we're speculating, but I would think that, that he would, they would not have let the season go down the drain if they thought that Trey was the one taking it there. You know, I think they probably would have made, made a decision to, to at least, 
figure out a way to get Garoppolo on the field at some point. Um, I'm going to ask you to sort of encapsulate everything because it sounds like Kyle Shanahan went to the table, made an enormous gamble, lost, and still gets to take all his chips back. Is that a fair assessment that through no skill of his own and through a series of bizarro world accidents, he ends up no worse than he was last January? That's that's exactly what it feels like. I mean, it feels like they they took a gamble on the ceiling, right? They they thought that Lance would be, and he still may be, the guy that that carries the franchise for over a long period of time. Um, I think it was clear we didn't have a lot of. It was a pretty small sample size, but I think it was clear that that it wasn't going to happen immediately. You know that they were going to have to do whatever they thought was right to get him through games. Um, you know, and unfortunately for Lance, I think one of those calculations was maybe running him more than, than they either should have or, or would have liked. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that now you're looking at a team that, I, I mean, I saw like the Vegas odds as soon as Garoppolo is the starting quarterback, they changed. You know, they're a better bet now than they were before. So it's really, it's, it is, it is a, <laughs> I, I, it's a terrible stroke of luck for Trey Lance. It's a, it's a terrible blow. I mean, he 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 loses a season uh, right when he was having his chance. But but yeah, as far as the team goes, I don't I don't know that you, you're not looking at the drop off you would have if this was Nate Sudfeld. That, then you'd have a catastrophe. But what Shanahan created was not a catastrophe. By the way, we're a minute or two into our four o'clock hour, so we got to do the station identification. And Tim, all I can tell you is you can tell your colleagues back at ESPN that Ray is available for voiceover work. Listen to this top of the hour rejoiner. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. Damn well, better be free. Yeah, wasn't that magic? Yeah, it's just. Beautiful. <laughs> I always thought you. I always thought you did that live, Ray. I didn't realize that was that was canned. I thought you just pulled it out every hour. I don't do anything live. In fact, in many ways, I'm legally dead. This entire <laughs> this entire interview has been pre-recorded. Actually, today. <laughs> <laughs> um, talk about multiverse. Like I'm here right now. Yeah, I'm not going to play the scenario. Well, what if they win the Super Bowl? Don't they have to bring Garoppolo back in 2023? If they get to the conference final and Garoppolo isn't a disaster, do you get a sense that they've already made up their mind that they're going to try to move him this coming off season, no matter what? Or have they abandoned all thought of trying to plan their way out of this and they're just going to let stuff happen the way it happens? Yeah, I would think that the last bit of that is probably, I think that, you know, experience would indicate that that's probably the wise course of action to let this play out and see where it goes because they made that decision last off season. You know, I mean, you go back and listen to Garoppolo's farewell and it was like, it wasn't couched at all. He was gone. He was, he literally said goodbye. Um, and I think that, you know, to, to replay that would probably be a mistake on everyone's part. If, if everything. Uh, you know, if, if what you're saying happens and they, they make a, a deep run into the playoffs. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's pretty wild to think that, yeah, we could be talking next year at this time about similar similar circumstances. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. The more things change, the more they stay the same. All the cliches are in place. Tim Kuhn, ESPN.com. Great story on the inner workings of the conversations that happened about bringing Jimmy back. You talked to the leadership group, and somebody asked the question, well, what happens if Lance struggles, when Lance struggles? And we already kind of talked about that through the multiverse. Uh, here's my last question for you, Tim. You know, you've been talking to athletes for decades right and you yep. i think in those conversations get a glimpse into how athletes not just nfl players but all athletes are are wired and and it feels like most athletes are wired to have been put in the situation that jimmy was put into and say you know what screw you guys uh wave me cut me i don't want to play i'm gonna go play without you you don't want me i don't want you i'm out of here jimmy never ever did that 
patience, I guess, the virtue that brought him back to the Niners, or maybe it was a lack of marketplace. We can figure that out later. How rare is it to find someone at such an ego-driven position like quarterback be willing to just sort of let things happen and not try to steer things in their own direction? Yeah, I mean, he played his hand as well as it could be played, and he and he did that by almost not playing it, right? I mean, he burned no bridges. He didn't he didn't demand to go to a certain place. He didn't he didn't, you know, F bomb management on his way up. Right. He work. didn't do the screw those guys podcast no. that you always get and, these days. Exactly. And he wasn't like, Oh, I'm gonna show everybody. You know, it just didn't seem that doesn't seem to be his nature. Um and I, and I think what you're getting at is that I think there are very few guys that would have come back under these circumstances, given what his place in the franchise was prior to this. You know, um, he's won a lot of games, you know, and, and he could have he could have he could have, you know, pounded his chest and demanded things or, or called people out. But but he really didn't. And now, I mean, it looks <laughs> It looks brilliant, and I don't know him that well. I've been around him over the years, but I, I sense, and I and I got it from other people too, that he he seemed really, really relaxed as the backup quarterback. And so there might be part of him that I'm sure he's thrilled in a in a you know in a twisted way to be back on on top of the of the the depth chart, even though it came at, at Lance's expense. But you know, I, I do think that sometimes it probably feels good to to not have those bright lights on you all the time, you know, and to just be the guy that, that has to just be ready instead of being the one that everybody, you know, the backup quarterbacks, the, the most popular guy, you know, everybody loves him. They wait for him to, to come in. So, um, you know, it's changed now, but I, 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 it felt like he was, he was kind of enjoying stepping back from, from all that, all that scrutiny. I think you might be right. I really do. He seems as comfortable in his own skin in this role. In a role that you'd think would lead to him being uncomfortable, he never looked uncomfortable for a minute. Tim, great piece today. Thank you very much. Again, we sit on top of this story. We talk about it breathlessly 24 hours a day to have new elements be brought out and the details that you brought him out in this story. It was really good stuff, man. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for having me. And, and uh Credit goes to my friend Nick Wagner too, because we we collaborated on this, and and Nick was Nick was great. So he's the insider. I'm just the outside. Yeah, well, he stinks. <laughs> nice job inside and outside. Thank you very very okay. much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Tim Kuhn here on ninety five seven The Game. Really good piece. I mean, if you're a Forty Nine er fan, this is one that you're going to want to read today, and it's available just on the front page of ESPN.com. You don't need to be an insider. You don't need to be a subscriber. It's just there, so you can go read it. Yeah, I and. and you read it and you realize it's completely open ended because nobody knows anything. And that includes the people in the building. We all keep trying to apply some sort of template for why this happened. And I really believe that Occam's razor is the explanation here. It's the most obvious thing is that a bunch of crap happened. Nobody saw any of it happening. And they're just making do with a situation that none of them really has a full comprehension of. Well, and I thought you asked a good question, and in your question you made a point. You know, what is going to be the plan going forward? No need. There is no plan going forward. It's let's see what happens from here on out. Like, that's, that's really it. Because the best laid plans that they possibly had have been detonated on an almost nuclear level. So we have a, yeah, just kind of, you know, throw the bobber out on the ocean and see how long it floats and in what direction it might go in because there is no predicting the, the minute you start trying to predict what might happen is when everything that is the exact opposite of that has happened but we've spent almost 18 months doing that exact thing well it's our job well i understand that <laughs> but everybody's been wrong at every turn and the lesson not me i did say bring jimmy garoppolo back yeah well okay but that wasn't a prediction. That was just a, this is something they, they ought to do. You were urging them to do that. 
Not that I think they did it because of you. Well, but they listen. They're definitely clearly okay. Listening. They listen. They're listening. At least I'll tell you what. If I can they see listen got a to this show, on his radio. if any of them listen to this show, they should be fired summarily. I guarantee you, Parag's watching us on YouTube right now. Is he commenting? Is Parag commenting on the YouTube? No, Parag's not there. No, he, but I, he, if he was, he, he should be fired immediately. I see DOD Spec Ops City Lock. Did you already get a shout? Did you get two shout outs today? Who else is on here? Who else? Mojo SF. Oh. See, when they don't give their real names, it's hard to take them seriously. Except for Mike Honcho. That's definitely someone's real name. Yeah, and we'll be taking him very seriously. Or it's Parag's Burner. No, I think... <laughs> Parag's Burner is Mike Honcho? I, I mean, I, I honestly think nobody knows anything. Playboy magazine? And that's the, that's the best part of this story, is that nobody knows anything. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and for a, for a business that is as pre-programmed as anything Hollywood has to offer, that the only surprises come in the games themselves. This is 18 months of studious planning to get nowhere and to end up with the same hamster in the same wheel as they had 18 months ago is to me hilarious. It's like my sophomore through senior years of college. A lot of great plans were made. What happened? I don't know. Just kind of went by in a blur. Drinking. Yeah. <laughs> it just got fuzzy. Uh, Brian in Palo Alto has been waiting a really long time. Brian, you're on 95.7 The Game. What do you got? Yeah, I think all Jimmy has to do is just keep winning. Right? He has the third highest winning percentage of any active quarterback in the National Football League. And we're very fortunate to have that. I think he's a lot better quarterback than Trey Lance is. You know who else thinks that? According to Mike Silver, a lot of guys in the locker room and a lot of the coaches think that, too. So all he has to do is just keep winning. Uh, I think he may be, like, a little bit freer, right, given the sort of circumstances, right, where last year, you know, I think he'll I think he'll be more vocal with Shanahan about, like, what, you know, what kind of game plan he wants to run. But, I, you know, I, I kind of I tend to agree with you, Brian. I really do. And I, I don't mean to cut you short. Thank you for waiting for so long. I, I probably should have waited one more break to go to you. As soon as I went to the phone call, Grandy looked at me funny, which means I went to a phone call too late in a segment. But thank you, Brian. And I tell you, I, I do think you make a good point. Jimmy's ego might actually materialize in a, it's kind of my show now way. You know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of do this how I want to do this. Definitely sticking with Kyle's vision, but not only looking at this through Kyle's eyes. I'm gonna use my eyes too. And if I see an open receiver downfield, I'm gonna try to hit him instead of hitting that three yard slant that Kyle designed because it was the safer play. And if that's the kind of Jimmy we get, maybe this season does get more exciting. Who knows? Stick around, find out. We will all we are all witnesses. As they say, Damon and Ratto here on 95.7 The Game, about a half an hour away from saying hello to Peter King. That should be interesting. We are brought to you by the Caltrans Stormwater Program. We see a lot of trash on our highways and in our waterways. This isn't what we want. Clean highways, clean water. Now that is what we want. You can help change this to that. Learn how at cleanwaterca.com. From the Caltrans Stormwater Program. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately. Like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this then? Mm, it sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. Do you think all premium fuels are the same? Well, your engine doesn't. Shell V Power Nitro Plus helps keep your engine running like new because it's engineered to defend against four main engine threats. Gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. So next time, choose Shell's most advanced fuel ever. It's fuel for thought. 
and engines that continuously use Shell V-Power Nitro Plus Premium Gasoline. Hi, I'm Aaron, owner of California Deluxe Windows. Ever notice? When your neighbors get new windows, there is a large black eye of broken stucco, uneven plaster, and even mismatched paint. At California Deluxe Windows, we never leave a ring around the window. Why? Because we are one of the only companies in California who custom crafts every window and door to your home's exact measurements. Almost everyone else on the radio is a distributor. They grab a window from a warehouse, break open your walls, shove it in, and patch things up. At California at Deluxe Windows, we take pride in our work. Our installation technique is so precise, we do not break your stucco. Your house could be covered with potato chips and we wouldn't crack one. Call now and for a limited time, you get 30% off your entire order and 24 months of interest-free financing. 800-874-3600. 800-874-3600. That's 800-874-3600. California Deluxe Windows. Windows engineered for life. Certain terms and conditions apply. CSLB number seven. If you own a business, this has been a bumpy ride. From pandemic to inflation, I'm sure you could use a break. If your business has five or more employees and survived COVID, you might be eligible to receive a payroll tax refund of up to $26,000 per employee. The challenge is getting your hands on it. Hi, I'm Howard Mackler, and that's why I founded GetRefunds.com to cut through the red tape and get you the money. The team of tax attorneys we have put together are highly trained in this little-known payroll tax refund program. We do all the work, charge not a dime up front, and simply share a percentage of the cash that we get for you. Businesses of all types can qualify, including those that took PPP, nonprofits, and even those that increases in sales. We have helped return over a billion dollars to businesses, and we can help you too. Just go to GetRefunds.com slash sports, click on Qualify Me, and answer a few questions. This payroll tax refund is only available for a limited period of time. Don't lose out on up to $26,000 per employee. Go to GetRefunds.com slash sports. That's GetRefunds.com slash sports. Other banks go out of their way to make redeeming credit card rewards needlessly complicated. Like how they require minimums or force you to use your rewards before reaching some arbitrary expiration date. But Discover isn't like that. With Discover, you can redeem your rewards for cash in any amount at any time. So you'll never have to jump through hoops. Unless you're like a trapezist, then by all means, go right ahead. Learn more at discover.com slash redeem rewards. Terms apply. Prescription products require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Subscription required. Refund available for 60 days after purchase. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same but is 90% cheaper? And you can get it online? Just go to 4 slash joy. You'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, a 100% online process, and trusted generic alternatives to the biggest brands at 90% off. That's right, get generic for Viagra, the same active ingredient as brand name Viagra, but 90% cheaper. It's the same medication you get from your doctor, but with zero copay, no expensive appointments, and no awkward face-to-face -face conversations. Results are guaranteed or your money back. To start your free online visit, you need to go to this exclusive address, 4 slash joy. That's 4 slash joy for your free online visit. F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O-Y. San Mateo, a chance of rain and an overnight low of 62. Brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Your neighborhood Ashley store has all the styles, selection, and value you'll need to invite fall in this season. Find furniture you'll love by shopping locally or visit Ashley.com today. Visit Friedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill September 23rd through September 25th for their fall clearance sale event and take advantage of one-of-a-kind opportunities. Visit Friedman's Appliance fall clearance sale event for the best time to save on new appliances for your home. Now back to Damon and Ratto, brought to you by BMW Fairfield on 95.7 The Game. Welcome back. Damon and Ratto here on 95.7 The Game. It's good to have you around today. Peter King's going to be joining us at 445. Going to be a very interesting conversation with Peter King. Uh, Ray, uh, Tim Kuhn even said it. I know it's one of your favorite sayings that the backup quarterback is always the most popular guy in town, and that officially means now it's Brock Purdy's city. We're all just living in it. <laughs> um, how fascinating would it be if... Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt in Denver, and this really is Brock Purdy's show the rest of the way. That would that would that's that'd be a lot. 
Hilarity would ensue. Hilarity would ensue. Because, once again, the law of unintended consequences is the only law by which this team operates. Right. Whenever you make plans, the other thing happens. Well, except for the one thing that they did plan and has held up throughout, is that their defense is very stout. It is. It so is. They, they might be, be able even to get away with it with Brock Purdy because of all the good teams in the NFL... 49ers are the only one where the where the quarterback is about the fourth or fifth most important guy. It's it's a formula that the drafting of Trey Lance was trying to get away from. Exactly. And once again, Here God laughed. Yeah, he certainly did. So let's say the unthinkable happens. Oh, my gosh. Jimmy goes down in Denver. Brock Purdy is in there clearly winning that game. I mean, that's Purdy country. You know, Niners, Broncos, Purdy. You gotta like his. You, you gotta like your chances. After that, though, it's a little bit of a toss up. You know who then would be the most popular guy in town? Because again, Purdy is a starter. Can't be as popular as the backup. Kyle Yuschek. No. 49ers have signed a quarterback to the practice squad who would immediately be elevated. Are you ready for the Kurt Benkert era? Kurt Benkert. Why not Benkert? Benkert. He played. East Carolina. He also played at Virginia. He was with the Atlanta Falcons. And now he is your San Francisco 49er practice squad quarterback. Pretty exciting, don't you think? Makes me wonder if he won't become the backup just because he's at least had a cup of coffee in the NFL, whereas Purdy has barely gotten inside the Starbucks. You're right. But I, here's the thing, though, that makes me sort of interested in Purdy. And now we're not going to turn this into a what do you think Brock Purdy can be situation. Why not? Because we don't even know what Jimmy Garoppolo might be. And we've been watching him for five years, for goodness sakes. We're not going to start assuming. But I'll, I'll say this. There's a lot of Big 12 quarterbacks in this league right now. Very few of them put up bigger Big 12 numbers than Brock Purdy did. He had a prolific collegiate career. And he's a little bit better of a pure passer then, you know, you could assume Lance would have been maybe even... No, I'm not going to say it. Say it. Maybe even Jimmy Garoppolo. 888 <laughs> uh, What is your prediction for Garoppolo 3.0? What do you think we are about to see? Are we going to get a better than before? More devil may care? More aggressive Jimmy Garoppolo because he's officially got nothing left to prove on a team that didn't even want him around anymore and now they officially need him if not more than he needs them do you think we're going to get the exact same guy nothing changes at all every eighth pass officially turns into a choose your own adventure book where he's you know the only guys he's hitting in the numbers are opposing linebackers. Sometimes, do you, do you think that's the Jimmy Garoppolo? So the same guy, or a regression, a markedly worse? Even the repaired shoulder didn't make him better. You know, damaged goods, not as good as he used to be. Jimmy Garoppolo. What do you think we're going to get? Eight 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 nine five seven. 9570. Ray, I know you're firmly in the camp of nothing changes. I don't think anything changes, and I also don't think that he's suddenly going to go rogue and go, I've got all the leverage. Oh, not rogue. Not, no, I not, mean, he's going to do what Kyle Shanahan wants him to do in all situations because that's how he's wired. Everybody, you know, Tim Kewen said he was, he was okay with playing the role of the backup. You know, it's almost as though he is... Sort of a, just a savant. You just, I'm going to do what I do. I don't think he's going to, you know, all of a sudden go, I want to throw the ball on third and five. Because I don't think he's that guy. I don't think he's the guy who's going to But you change. should want to throw the ball on third and five. I'm just using it as an example. If the play comes in and it's a run, he's going to run the play. I don't think he's going to all of a sudden go, I've been here long enough. I know what I'm doing. I don't think that's the relationship he has with Kyle Shanahan or that Kyle Shanahan has with him. And I think Jimmy Garoppolo is not a guy who's going to deviate from the script that's been given him. He's going to learn his lines and he's going to recite them on command. Kyle Shanahan was asked about, you know, the play that will go down in infamy, if you will, 
And again, he gets snippy when he gets asked about it. Kyle, I have a sense you'd like another quarterback uh, running question. Actually, the more the better, so I can help educate. <laughs> there you go. So, you know, he's going to, to... And look, there's no doubt that Kyle knows more about this than we ever will. But what I don't think he grasps isn't necessarily the play that he was called. It was the frequency. And as I said earlier in the show today, what's one of everyone's least favorite yet most common sayings in sports over the last five to ten years? It's load management. And when you're asking your quarterback to run into the teeth of defense as often as Kyle Shanahan was prepared to seemingly ask Trey Lance to run right into the teeth of the defense, there is a level of load management there that I think he needed to pay more respect to. You know, he was going to grind the gears of that running game in Trey Lance's direction in a way that was so, it was there was going to be a historical outlier. He was going to have asked his rookie, young first-year starting quarterback, to run the ball more times than any quarterback in his first year as a starter has ever run the ball by about forty times. If you you know want to play the on pace for game, and I don't think that that's the right way to go about it. Now, we asked Michael Irvin about all this yesterday, and here's what he said. I'd rather him do those plays on the outside, and I'd rather him tell a young Trey Lance, get your butt down. This is not college. This is not high school. You're not the best athlete on the field. And everywhere you've ever played, you've been by far the best athlete on the field. Everybody's the best athlete on the field here. I would have liked that. But, man, I just trust how, how Kyle runs that situation from the quarterback situation. I, I, I appreciate it when I look at it from the long scope. And you look at the running quarterback that we saw on one of our Monday night football games last night, Jalen Hurts, was, was fantastic. He was fantastic. He was a feast for the senses. The guy, just he, he, he's the best option quarterback that I've seen play NFL football. Because I don't even think like a guy like Lamar Jackson is an option quarterback. He's keeping it. He's not pitching it to the running back. They're running option. They're running RPO like they were a college team. And by the way, the Philadelphia Eagles through two games are far and away the NFL's yardage leader. Far and away putting up the most yards of any team. I mean, they the thing that the Eagles got going for them as long as... Jalen Hurts is their quarterback, Ray, is they're basically the NFL's version of Air Force. They're really hard to prepare for. They run a style of football that you don't see anywhere else in this league right now. And, you know, you can't ask your scout team quarterback to, oh, hey, could you just be Jalen Hurts in practice for us this week? Because there really isn't another Jalen Hurts in this league right now. So that's what makes, I think, the Eagles... A completely fascinating team. It's they're they're very good. They're very good at what they do. They've got talent on both sides of the ball, and they're hard to prepare for. It's a pretty good combination for a team that's sitting in what I think is sort of a shallow division. Yeah, but their great flaw is that they have to get thirty eight a game to survive because their defense is awful. Oh, I don't think their defense is awful. I just think their defense is an NFL defense. Soft, pliable, weak-willed. I mean, if I watch the Lions game. The Lions... Here's the deal. The Lions have been pretty good offensively so far. The Lions can actually move the football. They've played... They, <laughs> Got to give well, Dan Campbell a little credit here. Doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes. I will beat your ass. He wasn't lying. He's played the Eagles and the Commanders. Two teams that don't stop people. When he faces a team that can tackle a human being, it's going to be different. Darius Slay had one of the best nights any NFL cornerback has ever had last night. Fletcher Cox is just dropping guys. I mean, they're, they're good. They're, they're not inept on that side of the ball. No, no, no I'm, I'm talking about... D- the Lions. I'm sorry. I'm I was talking, talking about the, the Lions Eagles, offense so. has played two bad defenses. I'm not talking about the Lions defense. The Lions defense might be okay. But I'll still need to see more. Again, they gave up 38 and 27 to a good offense and then a poor offense. So I will say this. The Buffalo Bills has officially turned 
all of their preseason hype into two of the most lopsided wins we've seen so far this year. Uh, the Bills have outscored their opponents 72-17 through two weeks of football. Josh Allen looks like a video game. He can put the ball wherever he wants, and physics need not apply. He only had one rushing attempt last night. He threw for 317 yards and four touchdowns. The team has punted three times in the first two weeks. All three of them were last night. They did not punt week one against the Los Angeles Rams. Buffalo Bills <laughs> look like a problem for the whole league. And boy, we got an interesting week three game. And again, week three starts in 48 hours. We have, uh, we have Bills and Dolphins in Miami, a battle of 2-0 AFC East teams. So that's we, there's some really good football games on the schedule this weekend, obviously with Sunday Night Football making room for all of our attention to be heaped on the 49ers and Denver Broncos. 888-957-9570 is the number. This is Tony in Hayward. Thanks for calling and listening, Tony. What do you got? Hey, you know, I think uh, the way um, the way Jimmy G has been conducting himself uh, is, I think, this shows us why the team has won with him uh, with him as the quarterback. He kind of reminds me of Alex Smith. I was really bummed when Alex Smith was was replaced by Caps. Caps a great, you know, good quarterback, good guy, but I liked his personality. I thought, you know, he had that intangible, and I think Jimmy G is the same way. It's, you know, there's there's a whole lot more to leading your team than than what you can do on the field. You know, he just has that attitude, and I think uh, I'm glad he's back. It's devastating for Trey Lance, of course. Don't want to see any injuries, but I'm, I'm glad Jimmy's back. I think he's the guy. Just got to build some things around him. I think he's the guy. What happens? And thanks for the call, Tony. What happens if Jimmy has his best season of his career? Like, what, ha- what happens then? Like, in 2019, he threw for over 3,900 yards with 27 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. What if he's 4,030 and 10? <laughs> what, what, what then? What do the 49ers do at that point? Are they offering him a new contract? Is there a reality where Trey begins next year as Jimmy Garoppolo's backup quarterback once again? I, I think anything is possible. I mean, it, 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 I mean, do you honestly think that you know, I mean, I think a lot of it depends on how deep they go. If he puts up those numbers and they get knocked out in the first round, I could see them moving on, just going, well, here, we built up your resume. Now somebody will be sure to tra- trade for you. Well, I mean, I, I... Or, you know, if they have a deep, deep run and they actually threaten to get to the big one, then they've got another decision to make, and maybe that decision ends up being, through no fault of your own, Trey, you can't fit here. And then you just you you move on to the next thing, because everybody has always pinned this trade as a, a sort of modified death sentence, where well they gave up all this capital they have to do this, they don't have to do anything, because there's always another draft and there's always another quarterback out there, and even if you never get those three draft picks back, you make do. Right, because I mean, every the, team makes do. If. Trey Lance, and I don't think he lives in this house yet, but if he does live on, you know, one, two, three, four, bad investment lane, there's only one right time to get out of a bad investment, and that's today. And it really doesn't care. It it doesn't matter how much money you left in the middle of the table. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. The best time to get out of a bad investment is right now once you've identified it as a bad investment. So, yeah, the world turns. But I wonder if it wouldn't turn so funny where Jimmy Garoppolo was turned into another three, four year contract and we're right back to where we belong and or or not not to where we belong, but where we started here. And at that point, you got to turn around to Kyle Shanahan and say, well, why weren't you just a little bit more patient? Like and and I really do think I have the reason. Like, why did Kyle want to move on from Jimmy Garoppolo? I got the reason. It's because he has never outperformed the quarterback that he's played against in a playoff game. The opposing quarterback has always finished that playoff game with a better quarterbacking rating. And Jimmy Garoppolo's got a fourth quarter playoff game quarterback rating of 28. You get a 39.6 for just spiking the football. 
So spiking the football has been a better option for the Niners than Jimmy Garoppolo has been in playoff game fourth quarters. And I think that is what Kyle Shanahan looked at more than anything else. Because, look, Jimmy in the regular season gets the job done. Look at his record. It speaks for itself. Look at the record of success that he has in the regular season. Wins like 70% of his games. That's a deal you would make with the devil to have a level of success like that. So why would you walk away from that successful of a deal? Well, yeah, sure, it has a little bit to do with ability to be available. And maybe it has a little bit to do with, you know, it was hard to reach in the offseason, but I really don't think it does at all. I know, it's, it's, it's pure playoff performance that made Kyle walk away. I, um, that's it. That's it. And specifically, it's fourth quarter playoff performance. Because that's the ultimate, all right, it's time to be a quarterback. And that's when Jimmy's played his worst football of his career. Which goes back to what Tim Kuhn said. You know, Tim said, you know, Jimmy was oddly comfortable in this backup role. And he might have even embraced it. You know, there's a lot of pressure on the main stage, Lollapalooza, but on the side stage, there's less pressure. You're still playing at a concert. You're still you, you still got a lot of people watching you. You're still part of the act, still part of the show. But the main spotlight isn't on you at all times, just like leaving blisters on your skin. It's so hot. See, and I, I think that that fourth quarter, I'm, I'm not buying it because the two games they've lost in the postseason in seven in 19 and 21. Were defensive failures at the end. You're right, but guess what? You don't need to worry about your defensive failure sinking you if you continue to score. That said, the Super Bowl, Kansas City had a ball the entire fourth quarter. The entire fourth quarter, they did what they wanted. They because that's Jimmy. Because Jimmy was Johnny three and out. Okay, but at some point, the defense you've built has to be able to get a stop. You can't give up three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. You can't. I would agree with you there. I'm not arguing. And the other thing is... But you don't, here's the thing. You don't have a chance to score three touchdowns in a fourth quarter if you've got an offense that's moving the ball, burning clock, and scoring points. Okay, but I, don't, I still don't buy the idea that that's what convinced Kyle Shanahan. i got to move on from this guy. Because those two games were not about Garoppolo failures. He didn't, they didn't turn the ball over a ton of times. What they did was not stop anybody. And that's because the secondary could be picked on and was. And the fact that they haven't fully fixed that yet, or at least haven't fixed it yet to where we know it's fixed. It's gotten better. We'll see. I, I mean, mean let's it, see them let's see them when they play the Rams. Right. Because I don't think I don't think Denver is going to offer much of a threat there either. And, and, and Chicago, yeah. nor Geno Smith led Seahawks yeah. represent scary level passing attack. Yeah. So I, I'm jury's jury's still out for that for me. But I think it's just that he was tired of doing eight in the playing against eight in the box. It well, just you know what? How do we fix that? We can get the ball down the field deeper. And that's why I like Trey Lance. Well, what else can he do? I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, they haven't figured it out. Somebody said, look, Damon, the defense gave up two third and 17s. You're right. They did. Richard Sherman got burnt in that fourth quarter. Um, he hits that pass to Emmanuel Sanders. He's got a big shiny ring today. I mean, yes, I understand that the defense gives up the 10-point leads and Jimmy's not on the field when that's happening. But Jimmy was on the field when the 49ers were, you know, a parade of three and outs and not scoring the football. So, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I, but, I, but look at it this way. Kyle Shanahan never said, all right, then, I need to have a corner drafted in the first round. I need to go ahead and fix my secondary. That's my biggest problem. No, no cornerback got cut. Well, you know, tell that to Jason Verrett. But no cornerback was moved on from. Jimmy got moved on well, from. Well, that, I mean, again, I think we found out over the last three years that Kyle Shanahan is not the infallible genius that everybody's been giving him credit for. There are, there are a few things that he does 
as well as any coach in the game. But there are also things that he tends to fixate on and fixate against. I mean, the fact that he hasn't fixed the offensive line, the fact that the the secondary is still a huge question mark, after after three years of this, suggests to me that he's got blind spots too, especially well, as a general manager. I'll, I'll, and look, I've, I've I've been saying that maybe removing some responsibilities from Kyle could be a better thing for this team than leaving those Kyle's responsibilities. But I got some good news. Right now, the 49ers have the closest thing they've had to a shutdown corner in a long time in Mooney Ward. They've also got what is the NFL's highest rated safety tandem in the league right now. If Talanoa Hufanga, who is the second highest graded safety through pro football focus right now, if he keeps on playing like this, he's Jamal Adams, everyone. <laughs> he's, he's the second coming of Troy Polamalu if he keeps on playing like this. So, did Kyle address his secondary? He may have. That offensive line that you're saying, you know, and, and rightfully so, because they were unproven, we don't know. They told us it was a weak spot. Guard center guard is not the fatal flaw of this team yet. As a matter of fact, Spencer Burford has been fantastic, and he is the highest rated uh, 49er offensive lineman right now. Aaron Banks is playing well. So, you know, maybe they did. Maybe fix they their did. Biggest I'm not, and I'm perfectly willing to allow for that, but I'm. I'm playing the schedule game early, which is, who have you played? Who's threatened you? Neither of those teams did. They lost to a lake, and they beat the hell out of a bad Seattle team. But again, on the way to a Super Bowl, you were unimpressed with every single regular season moment. No, there were games when they beat legitimate teams. The win in New Orleans the win was in an New eye-opener. And that's the thing. That was, isn't that the only really regular season Jimmy Garoppolo's signature moment? Yeah. But... You know, do you need a signature moment from your quarterback in all situations? I mean, Kyle Shanahan has been trying to, you know, thread this needle with different kinds of thread. And he's going to have to do it again. Period. More calls and Peter King right around the corner here on 95.7 The Game. Damon and Ratto, the largest commercial-free, uninterrupted segment of the entire afternoon's around the corner. We want you to be a part of it. Again, 888-957-9570. Your calls after Peter King. You understand what we're talking about. You know what the assignment is. Damon and Ratto, brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full-service banking, no compromises. Are you ready for your palm reading, my dear? Yeah, let's do this. I sense that you crave something. More reliable. Right. You know you deserve better and want out of a relationship. Yes, with my big name wireless carrier. You're who now? My big name wireless carrier. That's why I switched to Xfinity Mobile. Now I get unlimited with 5G for $30 per month on the most reliable 5G network. Uh, Let's talk about your aura. It's so... And get this. They can even save you hundreds a year on your wireless bill over T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Yep, but you already knew that, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I definitely saw this coming. Start seeing savings today. Switch to the fastest mobile service, Xfinity Mobile. Now with the best price on two lines of unlimited, just $30 a line per month. Switch today. Xfinity Internet required. Price comparison for two unlimited lines under available 5G pricing plans of top three carriers. Taxes and fees extra. Reduced speeds up to 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Most reliable based on root metrics. US report. Comcast analysis of mobile Wi-Fi and cellular data from Ookla Speed Test Intelligence Q2 2022. At BMW of Fairfield, our guests work with one client advisor through the entire transaction. No handoffs to multiple car salesmen. No waiting for a finance manager to take you to a back room. Client advisors at BMW of Fairfield are thoroughly trained in every aspect of the process so they can lead you efficiently and effectively through the purchase from start to finish. There is a better way. Experience it for yourself at BMW of Fairfield. One price, one person, one hour. Are you looking for a rewarding new career? Join the United States Postal Service and apply for roles nationwide. Serve your community with pride and receive benefits including competitive pay and opportunities for advancement. Whether you are looking for full-time, part-time, or seasonal positions, we have options that may be perfect for you. The United States Postal Service is an equal opportunity employer. Apply now at usps.com careers. 
It's not easy being the one everyone counts on to keep the facility running, no matter the weather or supply chain hiccup. But we get you, Raymond in Buffalo and Maria in Miami, Jules in Minneapolis and Stan in central Indiana, taking control of everything that's under your control. At Granger, we're here for you with experienced branch staff at over 250 locations so you get the product you're looking for. Call clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Hi, Tom Bodette here, thinking about road tripping to the family reunion. Potato salad, doing battle with the sun, dog crawling all over the cousins, and nothing brings us closer than someone squished in the middle seat. Well, it's a good thing Motel 6 has clean, comfortable rooms at a great low rate. They'll get you out of that minivan so the kids can get all spiffed up before Grandma starts pinching their cheeks. I'm Tom Bodette for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Everything, our farm, our stand, our pop-up shop, it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local, raw honey for our family. And then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC and WePay Inc. Subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Cars for kids, K A R S, cars for kids. 1877 Cars for kids, donate your car today. 1877 Cars for kids, K A R S, cars for kids. 1877 Cars for kids, donate your car today. Donate your car today at carsforkids.org. Your car, running or not, can be picked up as soon as the next day. No title, no problem. Call 877-CARS-FOR-KIDS or go online at carsforkids.org to donate today. 1877-CARS-FOR-KIDS, Now accepting donations of land, homes, buildings, or any kind of real estate. There's a reason Comcast Business powers more businesses than any other provider. Actually, there's a few. Comcast Business offers the fastest reliable network, the peace of mind that comes with Security Edge, helping to protect all your connected devices, and the most reliable 5G mobile network. Want me to keep going? I can. Whether your small business is starting or growing, you need Comcast Business. Technology solutions that put you ahead and give you serious savings. Comcast Business, powering possibilities. Get started with fast speeds and advanced security. Together for just $69.99 a month for 12 months with a two-year agreement. Or find out how to get up to a $650 prepaid card with a qualifying bundle. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. New 50 megabits per second internet and security edge customers only. Requires enrollment in EcoBill and AutoPay. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. Comcast Business Mobile utilizes the network with the most fruit metrics 5G data reliability wins in 1H 2022. Results may vary, not an endorsement. <laughs> Now back to Damon and Ratto, brought to you by BMW Fairfield on 95.7 The Game. Go ahead and download the Odyssey app. Take it with you no matter where you go. You got a gambling uh, penchant, shall we say? Well, Cash to Ticket is a podcast to help you make smarter bets right now. You can find that on your Odyssey app, which you should have in your pocket if you just download it. The man, the myth. The legend himself, Peter King, for a weekly conversation here on 95.7 The Game. Every Tuesday during the football season, he stops on by here on Damon and Ratto. And, Peter, it happened. <laughs> it happened. We are back in business with Jimmy Garoppolo. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. The more things change around here, the more they stay the same. This league is amazing, isn't it? Well, 
you know, like the saddest thing for me, other than the fact that I just feel for this this kid, Trey Lance, because, look, he was going to get some sort of, not a final verdict this year, but you have to figure that if you trade three ones, if you use three ones to go get a quarterback, you're going to give him a couple of years, okay? So in giving him a couple of years, obviously this was going to be one of them. And if he struggled, whatever, you still got to feel that the 49ers are going to give him next year to get a real legitimate chance. But now you start back at ground zero next year at the start of training camp, July 25th. He will have played. He would have been in the NFL for two seasons and started four games. So essentially, you are back almost exactly where you were at the start of this year. And that is the really sad thing. Now, for the immediacy of this, Okay, the one thing I would say that is probably a benefit for this team is that they got primetime games the next two weeks, Sunday night in Denver, the following Monday night, eight, eight days later, against the Rams in Santa Clara. And you have to figure that this team probably, down in whatever they'd say publicly, is going to feel a little bit more comfortable with Jimmy Garoppolo as the quarterback in these two games that at the absolute worst you got to split. But, you know, you really don't want to split. You want to win them both so that when you go on that East Coast trip, the Carolina trip, you then can have an opportunity to really make some hey, take a big lead in the division. But whatever, I don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself. You know, it's it's a it's shame for the kids. Obviously, but for the team right now at this moment in time, they might be better off with Garoppolo for the next couple of weeks. Is that such an open and shut case, though? Is there a possibility, you know, once they get past what I think is probably a fairly winnable game against Denver and then their schedule starts to toughen up? Yeah. Is, is, it, is, it, given, is it a given that they are better off with Garoppolo? Or is it that nobody knows anything about Lance while they know something about Garoppolo, and that's well, as far as you can go? Ray, here's the question. Right now, the question becomes, at least to me, that, you know, I guess I would just ask, forget what it is you know about Trey Lance. Forget what it is you know about Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay? If you're a gambler right now, and you want the 49ers to win this game. I just want you to tell me who you'd feel better about as the starting quarterback of your team going into a very loud stadium in Denver Sunday night against Russell Wilson. Personally, if it's just one game you've got to win, what quarterback do I want in that game? I'd rather have Garoppolo. Peter, you had the uh, opportunity to talk to Kyle Shanahan on his drive home from Sunday's game, and you shed a little light in your column on what he said to Trey Lance. The quote is, I'm sorry you were playing your ass off, end quote. Where is that I'm sorry really being placed? I'm sorry that you got hurt. I'm sorry yeah. that I sent that play in that got you hurt. I'm sorry I was calling the game that way. Did you sense any regret about the decision to have Trey Lance uh, running as much as he seemed to be off and running in yet another football game? I, I mean, listen, this is going to be a little bit, perhaps a little bit knee-jerk, a little bit reactionary. Personally, just my thing, I think it's idiotic to want to take the call that was made and blame that um, and use that to blame the injury on. You know, one of the reasons that this team drafted Frey Lance, uh, without any question, one of the reasons that they drafted him is that he's got great ability to run with the ball. Okay? He's a mobile quarterback. And 
Look, um, was anybody questioning uh, the call that uh, the the Baltimore Ravens made when um, when Lamar Jackson ran for whatever it was a sixty eight yard touchdown the other day? I, I mean, no. He had a lot of he had more green in front of him than linebackers. I mean, I'll, I'll say that because I watched Lamar's my fantasy quarterback. I was watching close, but you know, we've been talking about what is the right amount of running. And since you can never, you know, the, the one, one of the biggest, most unwelcome phrases, concepts in sports these days is load management, right? We get it in the NBA mm-hmm. too often. We get it probably too much with our starting pitchers. And Kyle seems to be completely unaware of load management. For example, in Josh Allen's first year as a full-time starter, he was running on a designed quarterback run 71 times. Kyler Murray, 82 times. Jalen Hurts, 97 times. Lamar Jackson, 135 times. Trey Lance was on pace for 153 designed runs. That just feels like overkill. It feels like a ridiculous statement to make, to me, based on five quarters. That's, you can't make a judgment based on what are, you, what are you supposed to do in a monsoon? Throw the ball 35 times? No, but he ran, so he ran 13 week, times in Arizona. I mean, he, he's on a pace to have more carries than any running back on his own team in three of, look at it this way, Michael Vick's entire career, the greatest runner the NFL's ever seen. Uh, he ran 13 or more times, four times in his entire career. In three starts, Lance has already done it twice. It's not enough of a sample. Okay. It just isn't. It isn't enough. One of those games was in a monsoon where I guarantee you, if he threw the ball 30 times, people would be screaming, what in the world is Kyle doing uh, making Trey Lance throw the ball 30 times in this horrible environment. It just isn't enough of a sample, okay? That's one thing. Now you talk about these other guys, okay? What happened last week when, uh, you know, when, or in the last two weeks, really, when uh, when Josh Allen ran a lot, when uh, Lamar Jackson ran a lot? They had incredible success, they had great success. So you could argue, probably. I think um, I'm not sure. I think uh, tr- uh, I think Allen ran either ten or eleven times last week. Okay, so you could argue that you don't need to do that, especially when you're winning by three touchdowns. And you know what? You don't need to. Okay, and so they they got wise this week, and they only ran it once, and they still won by 34 points. So I don't know what the right number is. All I know is that Frey Lance has not played enough, and 15 rushes in five quarters is not a trend. It's a snapshot, and we don't know if that would have continued or not. And you could argue that if it did continue, that it would be careless, it would be reckless. But I don't think anybody calls it careless or reckless when Lamar Jackson runs as much as he does. Peter King with us here on 95.7 The Game. As you talk to Kyle Shanahan, what was your overall sense? Uh, was he relieved that Jimmy was still here? When yeah. I mean, he, he, Here's the funny thing. In no way could Kyle say it was my plan to keep Jimmy around all the time. It was circumstances that oh, brought him back. It was, circumst- that's, it was altogether circumstantial. And he said, obviously, you know, one phrase he used, and I forget if I use this or not. Um, he said, you know, when the musical chairs at quarterback in the NFL, uh, when the musical chairs were finished, when they were all filled, Jimmy was left without a seat. And so that turned out to be really lucky for us. And, you know, it was lucky for them. I, I mean, look. Kyle Shanahan is a pragmatic person. He was incredibly bad about Trey Lance. 
I, I mean, you could just feel it, hear it in his voice. It, he was just, he was just down. And, but, you know, he also knows that life goes on in this league. And he knows the next two weeks, you've got a killer game in Denver, even though Denver is a bizarre football team right now. And you've got a game against the Super Bowl champions the following week in what has become, you know, really probably right now, along with uh, Tampa Bay, New Orleans, the best rivalry game in the sport, uh, at least right now, the way it's been the last couple of years. So those are two gigantic games. So I don't want to be cliche, but nobody's crying for the 49ers. And he made it very clear. He goes, listen, we have now played, in my six years as a coach, we've now played four of those six seasons where we had a major injury to the quarterback. And he goes, this is the first time where we've really been able to say, okay, we're, you know, we're good. We're all right. We're going to be okay. And he said this is the first time probably in the Niners history since Montana and Young that there has been as good a backstop uh, for the starting quarterback uh, as, as there's been. And he made it very clear to say I'm not comparing Garoppolo and Lance to, to Young and Montana. I'm just simply saying that at this moment in time, I don't think this franchise has been as ready for a quarterback injury to the starter with a good team as we are right now and being able to plug in Garoppolo. Yeah, I don't think we've often seen a team lose a starting quarterback and their odds to win the Super Bowl actually increase. That is unique. and we're talk- crazy. It really is. We're talking with Peter King here on Damon and Ratto. Welcome, boys and girls, to your 5 o'clock hour. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on Twitch, YouTube, and the free Odyssey app. Damn well better be free. Uh, You've made a point in the past about teams not valuing the backup quarterback job nearly enough. If, If this is a template for anything, do you think this might motivate more teams to look at both this situation and the Dallas situation in the reverse and say, when quarterbacks go down, we've got to be more prepared than we are. You know, Ray, that is a fascinating question. And I thought a lot about it today. You know why? Because I think Cooper Rush is a very, very interesting player. And You know, this is a guy who was totally uh, coming out of college at Central Michigan. Just nobody looked at him as a valuable commodity. Nobody thought of him as, hey, let's take him in the fifth round and develop him. He was just a Joe Schmo. Okay? And the Cowboys took him, came to camp, and every day they said, you know, this guy's not bad. I don't know what what we were thinking scouting out of Central Michigan, but he's not bad. I'm only making this point because backup quarterback is not a one-size-fits-all job in the NFL. And I might say right now that, yes, you could have a different attitude about the backup quarterback because, in my opinion, for most teams in the NFL, certainly – for the San Francisco 49ers, based on recent history, the backup quarterback job is a top 10 player on the team. I wouldn't have said that to the Indianapolis Colts in 2006 because Peyton Manning played every game. I wouldn't have said it for the Green Bay Packers in 2002 because Brett Favre played every game. But I'll say it about the Niners, and, and I'll sort of say it, about the Dallas Cowboys, except, you know, the Cowboys last year had a game they had to win in Minnesota on Halloween, and they did not have Dak Prescott. They didn't know what they had in Cooper Rush, and he went in 
and he won a game on the road that the Cowboys had to have. What happens this week? The, you know, the Cowboys are in danger of going 0-2 and then having to travel to a division rival on the road for a Monday night game in week three. And they had to have that game against the Bengals. And what did Cooper Rush do? Played very well. And he beat the Bengals. And played very well, relatively speaking. He didn't light it up, but he also played efficiently. And my whole point is, you know, the backup quarterback is a very, very valuable player. And in some cases, I think that you can look at guys who people don't think are any good at all and say, we'd be comfortable if he had to play a few games. That's the way the Cowboys are. I'll give you one other quick example. New Orleans Saints, everybody's going to laugh at me and say, oh, my God, because I said Andy Dalton is the best backup in football. Now, you could argue that Garoppolo is better, that Nick Foles is better, that some other guys are better. And, 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 you know, it's subjective, okay? But in my opinion, Andy Dalton, at some point this year, is going to have to win big games for this team because I don't have a lot of faith in Jameis Winston. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But the New Orleans Saints invested real money in their backup quarterback and whatever he is, top one, top three, top eight, they got a good one in Andy Dalton, and they believe in the value of a backup quarterback. Peter King with us here on 95.7 The Game. Do you, in your mind, Peter, have a specific theory that you think is the X marks the spot of why Kyle Shanahan would want to move on from a quarterback who he was winning about 70% of his games with. I, I think I got it. I think yeah, I, because I just think, I just think Kyle Shanahan looked at Jimmy Garoppolo, even though he likes Garoppolo and is comfortable with him playing for him. I think he thought that he wanted a quarterback with a bigger upside. That's why I think he's never said that. He certainly never said it to me. He's never hinted that to me, but Clearly, why, if you know, you've had success with Garoppolo, why would you do what they did? And I think he did what they did because, A, as, you know, honestly, you can't count on Jimmy Garoppolo lasting for a full season because he's done it so seldom. And then, B, I think he feels like the modern quarterback has to be able to move a little bit more. And I think he believes Trey Lance certainly believes that he can move around a little bit more. Let me ask you a question, not about uh, facts and verifiable data, but of feelings and punditry. Uh, by and large, most people thought Kyle Shanahan was running an enormous risk when he did what he did, naming Lance the starter. And at this moment, with Lance out for the year and Garoppolo the starter again, among your colleagues in the in the national media, is there a sense of schadenfreude about, well, we told you this was a bad idea, and now you're back to where you started? Or are people sort of giving up the idea of trying to make sense of this at all and are just sitting back and waiting for the parade? I mean... You could probably argue about this in six different ways, Ray, but... That's why we got you. Is, the bottom line is, this was a risky venture to sign Jimmy Garoppolo because, you know, just a week before they signed him, or maybe three or four days, he talked about what a great quarterback room um, he had with his two backups led by Nate Sudfeld. So, and then that gets all blown up three or four days later, and then he has to say, I love having Jimmy Garoppolo as the, you know, in the quarterback room. I mean, I, I guess, <laughs> you know. But this was, it was going to be risky if Trey Lance stayed healthy the whole year. And now that he didn't stay healthy the whole year, it obviously seems like a brilliant move by the Niners. Just a brilliant move. And my feeling is that sometimes in the NFL, you get lucky. And, and this is a terror. I mentioned that, you know, I think I used the word, this was disastrously fortunate 
for the 49ers. And Kyle Shanahan said to me right away, he goes, no, there's nothing fortunate about this. Like, I gave him plenty of opportunities Sunday night. Very, very right-handed way to take. He was having none of it. I think he was just so incredibly sad about Trey Lance. Of course he's happy they got Garoppolo. But it's just one of those things that, I mean, you could you could argue about this all day. Obviously, it's much better that they signed Garoppolo. You know, now in retrospect. And all the people, all the geniuses like me who said, man, I don't know, were all saying, hey, great move. So, you know, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch absolutely did the right thing in retrospect. And I just think it's one of those situations in life where I don't think either side should be taking much of a victory lap on it. Don't you hate when you're fishing for a quote and the fish won't bite? (laughs) (laughs) Well... Honestly, really, what would you have thought of Kyle Shanahan if he pounded his chest saying, see, I'm smart? Well, again, he... he, he it, you know, it would have made him look like an idiot. Well, let's say the Niners actually win the Super Bowl and Jimmy Garoppolo is a champion and oh my God. At that post-game press conference, Kyle would have to begin it by saying basically, so... I didn't think any of this could happen. None of this was in my actual plan. As a matter of fact, we went in the complete opposite direction to the point where we said, go play for someone else and look at where we are. It's nuts. Um, We all know that Shanahan is a superior play caller and game designer, even though his offense stalls often in the red zone, but that's another topic. Does anyone consider that Kyle Shanahan might have a blind spot for the actual position of quarterback? Because he seems to be... Um, he seems to struggle to evaluate quarterbacks either coming out of the draft on other teams or on his own roster. I mean, his trail of quarterbacking tiers is, you know, he's got that odd obsession with Kirk Cousins. We know now that he, that they passed on Tom Brady. They passed on even looking at Patrick Mahomes. They passed on Deshaun Watson. He and his father conspired to have RG3 killed in our nation's capital. Now he's drafted Trey Lance and the jury... Like I said, it's not even out. The jury's not even out. The the court case is still in pre-trial deferment. He made a tra- yeah, he, he he made a trade for Jimmy Garoppolo that you know and and but you know he started. Me, I feel back. like he's he let's started so back. okay okay go ahead. But let's let's go back and just say first of all, would any team with a quarterback need any team have turned down? Jimmy Garoppolo for a second round draft choice. Would any any team? No, and and I I mean I guess no. that that. But boy, if if he had just decided to ride it out and say instead of getting Jimmy from New England, I'm going to start anew with someone else. It's just, I mean, now we're living in the multiverse. And it, for me to ask when our universe is so nuts to begin with, it's unfair for me to ask you multiverse questions. But I guess that was a multiverse question. I mean, that's one of those questions that I just I just think about it and I say, I, I don't know how to answer that other than to say, I think any team without a starting, a starting quarterback who got a phone call from Bill Belichick the day before the trading deadline and said, we will give you Jimmy Garoppolo for a second round draft choice with every what everyone in the NFL thought about Jimmy Garoppolo at the time, which was that he was a very bright young prospect. Okay? I you would have been you if 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 you found out a month later that the 49ers turned down Garoppolo for a two, so Belichick then called Cleveland and traded Garoppolo to Cleveland. I just want to ask you, what would you have said on your talk show about that? So I was so in the this is a huge mistake to draft Garoppolo camp on the night of Halloween when they made that trade. You mean to trade for Garoppolo? In the first place. I thought it was such a reversal of a clear direction. They were going to address this in the draft. I didn't want Kirk Cousins. So I 
sounded like an idiot when Garoppolo finally started playing and he was 5-0 and and everyone was like, Damon, you don't know anything about football, which is, you know, great for the show. But it, it so I, I was firmly against them trading for Garoppolo in the first place at any cost because I just thought it diverted from the plan, which was, hey, you know, eat humble pie this year, get a great draft pick and start anew. I don't know, but I, that's me. I'm 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 all I'm also a I sports talk show host. I don't know anything. I think that I mean, you know, I don't know <laughs> because okay, where are you going to draft? And I and I have to look at the you know, let's say you would have won five games or six. I, I don't know. Let's say you would have won five. You would have gone five and eleven. Where's your draft pick? Who's available? What's the smartest thing to do? I mean, look. Here's what you got on Jimmy Garoppolo. Okay, the guy who is one of the biggest punching bags in recent quarterback history. Here's what you got out of Garoppolo. You got a guy who played in one Super Bowl and his team was ahead by double digits with 10 minutes to go. Okay, And then the next year or two years later, you're in the NFC Championship game and you're close to going to another Super Bowl. If that isn't worth the whatever it was, 38th pick in the draft, I don't remember what it was. I, that's insane to think of that. It just, I just think it's crazy. And this is, this is not, picking a quarterback is not a one-size-fits-all uh, occupation. It's a difficult thing to do. And, you know, it's easy five years later to look back and say, and again, I'm not saying because you evidently said it at the time that it was a dumb decision and I don't think we should have done this. Okay, that's fine. You first guess. I think you're absolutely unequivocally wrong because of what, no matter whether Garoppolo was a long-term guy, okay, they got basically a guy who took a team, not took a team, the guy who played in one Super Bowl for the team, played in two uh, NFC Championship games, beat Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay in another playoff game, and you use the same pick that the Jets used to pick Geno Smith. I mean, look... To G- say that that was a bad pick is just... Uh, oh, no, look, in, 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 in retrospect, you know, in, in the, the five-year window that we've looked at, my reaction to the trade look silly now looking back at it because Garoppolo's degrees of success are obviously right there. There's also degrees of failure. These in particular, Peter, that I think had Kyle Shanahan moving off of him more than anything else in those playoff games that you were talking about, in all of them, in his six career playoff games, Jimmy Garoppolo's total fourth quarters are zero touchdowns, three interceptions, and a passer rating of 28. You get a passer rating of 39.6 just spiking the ball. And I think that is why Trey Lance became part of the Niners' picture because even though there was a degree of undeniable regular season success, when it matters most, outplaying your opposing quarterback in the fourth quarter, Jimmy never did it once. Yeah, I can't argue with you there. I would just argue vociferously that for the value that the 49ers gave up, this is a team that took Solomon Thomas with the third pick in the draft. So let's just be grateful that whatever happened, they didn't have to play Nick Mullins in all those games because you know what? They wouldn't have gotten to those games with Nick Mullins playing. So let's just quickly look ahead and thank you for your time as always here, Peter. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's no doubt that the 49ers are going to have a coaching advantage going into Denver, uh, at least based on early returns from Nathaniel Hackett. What is going on there? That honeymoon feels over. Nathaniel Hackett, here's the thing that shocks me about the first two weeks of the season. Nathaniel Hackett is a 1600 on the SAT guy. Okay, well, I'm showing my age there. When I went to high school the max score you could get on your SAT was 1,600. I'm not even sure what it is now. It might be 24. I I don't know. But anyway, he was a straight-A student. He's the valedictorian. Okay? 
And he has coached the first two games of the year like he belongs kept back for a year in school. Okay? And his the the decisiveness in the play calling, the fact that fifteen times Russell Wilson has had to sprint to get a play called before it goes to zero on the play clock. In two weeks, it's just it's absolutely mind boggling that he's having so much trouble with the simplest decisions in the game. And it's mind boggling that one week he says our goal is to get to the forty six yard line so we could kick a sixty four yard field goal. And then the next week he eschews a field goal in better altitude where the ball goes farther from the forty one yard line. I it's just I don't I mean I wanna give the guy a fair chance. But his first two games are about as bad as a coach can have in his first two games. And it's crazy. It's crazy what has happened here. And so, and again, I don't want to throw him out with yesterday's garbage yet. Give him a chance. But, man, he should have been a lot more ready to be an NFL head coach than he is. We had Michael Irvin on yesterday, and we asked him, you know, how long does it take to get a feel for whether or not a player really belongs in this league and then we turned around and asked him about a coach, and he, he said, man, that's off to a bad start, and indeed it is. So maybe the 49ers are walking into a better situation than walking into Denver looked like before we even started playing this year. Peter, as always, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. No problem, guys. Have a good week. You do the same. Peter King here on 95.7 The Game. It was like a full-on half an hour with Peter. That might have been the longest we've ever kept him, but hey, it's been a week. It's been a hell of a week around oh, yeah, here. Yeah, we didn't get to half the stuff. We really didn't. Can I can I give a little, you know, cuz it feels like doom and gloom and negativity and can I can I give you some positive notes on the 49ers? Can I give you a few you, positive notes? No. How about that? Well, look at it if this I way. tell you no, will you give, give them anyway? These are interesting. These are can I give you some interesting notes that will frame this team and give you a better understanding of what we're doing here. If I still say no, will you give them anyway? You're such a good co-host. Yes, I am. George Kittle reunited with his man crush. Like, that's got to be good for business on some just kind of vibing level, right? George Kittle reunited with his man crush, and obviously that locker room is excited that Jimmy is back. I don't think that they're excited that Jimmy is back at the expense of Trey, but they're excited he's back. And they've had success with him. They believe that they can have some more success with him and if there's this element of we've got unfinished business and this is our last dance let's ride hey you know look good feel good play good crazier things have happened right yeah kyle madsen oh works. he's playing never mind kyle writes for niner wire usa today as a matter of fact i think he is the niner wire he pointed out some interesting things in his article this week like I said, Talanoa Hufanga. You want some good news? The good news is Talif- <laughs> Talanoa Hufanga is a 49er. Right now, this guy is the NFL's second highest rated safety with a pro football focus score of 90.7. That would put him in the elite category over an entire season. So keep it up, Hufanga. Filling in for Jimmy Ward, Tayshawn Gibson. He hasn't been quite as good as Hufanga, but he's still an 82.7. Thank you, Pro Football Focus, whatever that means. Through two weeks, that is the league's best safety duo. Now, there's a sliding scale of having played Justin Fields and Geno Smith to consider. That's not a sliding scale. That's a plummet. That's a good start, though. That's a good start. You know, if you're playing two of the worst passing attacks in football. They fail to fail. At the end of those games, you should be playing well, and indeed they are. Aaron Banks and rookie right guard Spencer Burford in the first two weeks. Big questions about them. Well, it's been by no means perfect, writes Kyle. But both have earned two of the highest pass, uh, two of the, the two highest pass blocking grades on the 49ers offensive line. In other words, better than Trent Williams, better than Mike McGlinchey. Burford has been a team best in pass blocking grade. Banks is just sitting behind him. Banks gave up two pressures in Chicago, one against Seattle. Burford has yet to surrender a pressure or have one counted against him. 
And wrapping up what Kyle's notes were, Mike McGlinchey looks like an NFL starting right tackle again. You know, he doesn't need to be elite. He doesn't need to be the right side, you know, perfect equivalent of Trent Williams playing right tackle. He just needs to be good. He needs to not be a problem. And through two weeks, he's been good. He's not been a problem. So we'll give him that. So those are your bright spots, Ray. There's some good news. Now, would you like the interesting news? I know you can't be opposed to interesting news because I got something to tell you that I, you officially do not know. You ready? Okay. You ready? You sitting down? Oh, yeah. I can. And really? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that Jimmy Garoppolo passed a career milestone in the Seattle game? No. He did. He is now sitting at 12,006 career passing yards. He's over the 12,000 career yard mark. That is the 174th most yards thrown for in NFL history. So that's really not the interesting part of it. Guess who he's behind? He's 174. Guess who's 173rd? It's too ridiculous to say Joe Montana. But Colin Kaepernick. Colin Kaepernick. Another what? guy that had to be moved on from. I know those weren't just all football reasons, and that was wrong. But his football was seriously declining when Colin Kaepernick became Colin Kaepernick, something much bigger than just a football conversation. I'm surprised he got that many yards. So was I. 12 1,271 career passing yards for Colin Kaepernick. And Jimmy Garoppolo is now right behind him. I thought that was pretty interesting. Didn't no, you the, think the Kaepernick thing surprises me? There you go. See? Because I, I thought his career was too short to compile those kinds of numbers. Shows what I know. You doubt me. I don't doubt you. I doubt Lucas. <laughs> this is rich in Roseville. Rich, thank you for holding. Wasn't that a great Peter King interview? Oh, I love you guys, man. Always, I listen to you all the time. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, sir. Um, I just want to jump on you guys' bandwagons uh, about uh, running the quarterback. If I'm a head coach, and I learned this 10 years ago, science says defenses in the NFL are hitting at 1,900 to 6,500 pounds PSI per, per, per hit. That's like two thirds of what a car can, one tenth of two thirds of what a car can do to you. Why are you going to run that quarter, any quarterback into that? I mean, I agree with you. I think that there's a time and place for everything. I think there is a time and place to run aggressively like that with your quarterback if you think that he can handle it. To me, the time or place to do that will never be week two against a beatable opponent on your own field while you're winning and your running backs are getting whatever they want. It wasn't that Kyle ran his quarterback. It's when Kyle ran his quarterback and how much he seemed to be intent on running this quarterback that I've had a problem with. And I do think that people who tell me that, well, you shouldn't have a problem with that are a little misled. And, and you know, I know Peter is firmly in the you're wrong about that camp. I don't think so. I don't think I'm wrong about that. I don't think I'm wrong about that. Now, no one can predict when the injury is coming, but we can increase or decrease odds. To me, it felt like Kyle was increasing odds. The way that he was going about asking his young quarterback to go about executing these running plays when we all know you're trying to develop him in the pocket a little bit. So call more plays for him to throw. I mean, it, it was it's an extraordinary number of how many times Trey Lance was being asked to run. I think it's like 49 attempts and 70 dropbacks. That's a lot. That's more than normal to the point where that drifts into the land of abnormal pace that's never been sustained. So, you know, we all got opinions. Mine are just backed up by actual data. You are, however, guilty of a small sample size here. A small sample size. Well, again, that's all we got on young Mr. Yeah. Well, when a small sample size 
is all you have, that's really all there is to work with. Small yeah. sample size kind of means you're hand-picking your starting point and ending point. I'm not. I just have four games to work with. Well, I understand. I just don't know that you can draw any conclusions about anything about Trey Lance or how he's been used or not used. I think he, if he never plays another down for the San Francisco 49ers. Well, I mean, it's an ankle injury. He no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, no, no. I, let me just frame this. I'm not right. talking about the injury. If he never plays again, if he never starts another game, if Jimmy Garoppolo wins the job, keeps the job, yada, yada, yada. We will literally go his entire career knowing nothing about him. But there will be tons of opinions. None of them founded in verifiable, certifiable, we have a sense of who he is, fact. Because we don't have a sense of who he is. We don't have a sense of what Kyle Shanahan was going to do with him. Because presumably, he would be a different quarterback in 10 weeks than he was in week two. Presumably, he would be more comfortable at what he's supposed to be doing. Right. That. Small I mean, just, tick up yeah, every week. He's a, That's what yeah, you're hoping for. He's a cloud surrounded by bubbles. So, when I hear Guru, in particular, fulminating about he never got a chance, well, no, he, nobody got a chance, and there was no chance to be given. You know, you only get the, you only get the, the, the shake of the dice you get. Well, again, I know that we were painting a little bit more negatively yesterday. Here is the other little slice of positivity the show has for you today, if you're I a 49er fan. I know you do, but here's the, here, look at it this way. This is the kind of positivity, Ray, that I know you won't be able to refute. Because it's fact. Here's the best news I have got for you about Trey Lance, if you believe he might be the future. He could still be the future. As as a matter of fact, it's actually the only thing he can be right now because he can't be the present, and he certainly wasn't the past. But he can still be the future. And look, as bad as that broken ankle was, is if you had to order up a lower leg season-ending injury, like, that's high on the menu. (laughs) You would want that before you tore a knee or, I think, fractured your foot or had problem putting weight on your foot or having a problem with your hip. Broken ankles are officially fixable. And not that he needed more time, just sitting around watching and learning. And Kyle Shanahan says, you know, basically, I've, I've got a player who can get back in here like real soon i'm sure he's going to be around here all the time i'm um, gonna do his rehab here we haven't even discussed that but i'd be shocked if it wasn't that case so i mean got out of surgery a little bit ago i know we're all just kind of worried about him and making sure that he's doing all right mentally and physically talk to him here real soon i know some guys have been over there to already visit him but yeah we're not sure yet but as soon as he can get back in here and start rehabbing um, we're going to want him a part of everything every meeting he can be at every practice he can be at um, i know there's He's not going to be able to do all of that because of how much he's got to rehab, but especially in those meetings and stuff, we don't plan on Trey being away from us at all. Whenever he's not taking care of his ankle, plan on being with us. Every meeting, every chalk talk, every opportunity to learn, every chance to take a mental rep, he's got a ton of them now. He's got a chance to learn more. He's got a chance to study more. And what, you know, if he wants to look at it positively, is a gap year. He can get stronger. He can get leaner. He can get a little meaner. He can develop that you know if it well you know he's what was the offseason story about him because we needed one that week that oh you know he's got a little arm fatigue well you got all, all the opportunity in the world to rest that arm now don't you so that shouldn't be a problem like ever again so i mean good news sort of not really but i'm trying to make the best of it in fairness this is his third consecutive gap here yes it is And that's the crazy part of this whole thing. It's been 509 days since the day they drafted Trey Lance. And I'm not sure he was any less raw in the first two weeks that we saw him this season than the day that they drafted him. And can Kyle groom the quarterback? Did did Jimmy Garoppolo ever, in your estimation, get better playing for Kyle Shanahan, or was it always kind of about this is who he is, this is what he does, rinse, wash, repeat, you get the same thing every time? I don't, I don't know if he ever got better. I don't know that Shanahan. he... 
I, I think he did get better. He got more efficient. Um, no, I mean, the more he learned the offense, the more the team succeeded around him. I don't think he was the prime reason why they got to a Super Bowl or got to a conference final. He was, he was put very much part of a greater whole. But I think he did get better. Um, the, the only issue here is that you never got to see a reprise of the New Orleans game, which was the one game where he basically ran wild. He was after that, he wasn't a game manager as much as he was. He's a guy who doesn't kill you as much as some, te- some quarterbacks do. He doesn't ruin the running game's chances to excel. Doesn't ruin the defense's chances to keep another team at arm's length. He was aggressively okay. I mean, it just, you know, he was... There's a, a battle cry. There's something you want to put on a sign. We are aggressively okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> again, they got... You know, if... if if your if your view is well, what are the fantasy numbers? Well, you're not winning with him because he's not a fantasy guy. What he is is a guy who doesn't hurt you. And if you have enough good pieces around, that's good enough. It's good enough. Seven oh seven, Turk seven oh seven says Damon was that passing yardage or total yardage for Kaepernick? Passing yardage. Those are passing yardage numbers. Uh, Jose in Mountain View. Hello, Jose. What do you got? Hey, guys. Thanks for taking my call. You know, I, I, I rarely agree with Rado, but I like, he's on point today, man. And the quick thing I wanted to talk about was just our obsession with the mobile quarterback. When I was a kid growing up, first, pop, first name popped in my head, Randall Cunningham. You know, and then afterwards, Michael Vick. The dynamism is there. I think right now this is a chance to be able to reexamine what do the 49ers organization really want and whom do they want. Do they want someone like a Herbert, or do they want Lamar Jackson, who might be available next year? Pony up the offer, man. Think about that, right? And at the same time, think about, do you really want Shanahan as your coach? You've had enough body of knowledge to evaluate what he's good and not good at. A play calling is one of them. Defensive architecture is another one. But this, this offensive capability of coming up with plays, look, the fourth quarter we've seen Jimmy struggle. We've all seen it. And we put the onus on him for making the plays. The flip side to that is, what kind of plays were there uh, for him to be more successful in the fourth quarter that weren't called by Kyle Shanahan? Or the inability to use even uh, Kittle in those situations to give him that option to throw to. So those things have to be asked, too, and analyzed so we can figure out what's the future of the 49ers? What type of quarterback do they really need? And what type of coach do they really need? Because right now, we still have the same question marks from going back when Harbaugh left. Who are we? Thanks, guys. I think it's all legit, Jose. I think your 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 questions, your your worry, your anxieties, they're all legitimate, and that's the regression that Kyle has made. I think in the fans' eye this week, the guy that a lot of people, and I know that there is always going to be like ten percent of all fans who are never happy with any coach, no matter what. I mean, you got ten percent of Warriors fans during the greatest run in the history of the franchise saying, you know, you could do better than Steve Kerr. Get rid of Steve Kerr. You could do better than Steve. So, you know, 10% of everyone you're ever going to meet is a freaking moron, basically. 10% of all the people in any room that you're standing in should never speak. <laughs> and 10 is probably a conservative number. Oh, you're way, way, way overgrading. It's, it's closer to 80. But there is an element of the unsatisfiable... Don't understand what the real question is in the first place. Can't even identify a problem, but think they got the solution by just firing someone. Like, those fans are the worst. Uh, Kyle Shanahan doesn't get to live in a world where you can't do better than that anymore. He really doesn't. He's a good coach, and if the Niners let him go, he'd be hired again. Sure. If you're telling me, you can come back. Like, like, here's the thing. If you're, if you're, if we're, so we're at the fork in the road this off season. The Niners did not win the Super Bowl. As a matter of fact, everything kind of goes funny, and th- they don't make the playoffs. Okay. So your fork in the road is this: stay with Kyle Shanahan as the head conductor of your orchestra, with Trey Lance your virtuoso. Or hire Sean Payton and sign Lamar Jackson 
I am now officially as interested, if not more interested, in hiring Sean Payton and signing Lamar Jackson than I am clinging to the track of, no, you can't move on from Shanahan. You can't do better than that. Because Sean Payton officially, I think, represents a, yeah, you can do better than that. He's, um, well, he's got a Super Bowl, which Shanahan doesn't have. Um, but he also slips through. He, he was, he clung on to Drew Brees for all of those years. I don't know that anybody... He also kind of turned Drew Brees into Drew Brees. And that's an offense that that was significant. If I paid more attention on a day-to-day basis, I'd probably have a better opinion one way or another. But I think the two of them found a simpatico that they, they, they both enjoyed. So I don't know if he's better than Shane Andy. Certainly not worse. Um... But if you bring in Sean Payton, maybe he looks at Trey Lance and goes, nah, I want something better. Because I think you can get better than Trey Lance based only on the fact that you don't know what you have yet. How about this for an idea? Harbaugh, Harbaugh. Stop doing that. <laughs> no, right. it's, a, it's an awful idea for him to come back to the NFL in any way, shape, or form. And it's wrong Not for only to- for him, but... For the NFL. Right. It's, it's He's not also, an NFL coach. It's also wrong for me to invoke, bring back John Clayton invoke the late in such John, a way. Late great John and by the way, for you know, he doesn't belong in the NFL. That guy has got a serious winning percentage in the NFL. So I don't think you can say he does not belong. No, you just gotta is, be you gotta is, you gotta dance with the devil to be in business with Jim Harbaugh. He is temper temperamentally suited to college. He is, and he's also clinically insane. Oh, no, no. Clinically insane does not exempt him from an FL work. <laughs> Most coaches are clinically insane. I would put it to you that Kyle Shanahan, in his own way, is clinically insane. Yeah, we're all nuts. All I'm saying is Jim Harbaugh is far more attuned to the rhythms of college football. Not just the game, but all the, all the management around it. He is a college guy through and through. When we come on back, a couple of more calls and sneaking in a little talk of the rest of the sports universe since the entire sports universe is still happening while we are fixated like the Hubble telescope on the 49ers. By the way, there's a better telescope than Hubble now, so we should retire that saying. Damon and Ratto here on 95.7 The Game. We are brought to you by Chilton Auto Body. Have you been in a car accident? Chilton Auto Body is 15 convenient Bay Area locations to help restore your vehicle to pre-accident condition. Chilton Auto Body is also actively hiring for all positions. For more details, head to ChiltonAutoBody.com, the Bay Area's leader in collision repair. Visit Friedman's Appliance in Pleasant Hill September 23rd through September 25th for their fall clearance sale event and take advantage of -of one-of-a-kind opportunities. Visit Friedman's Appliance fall clearance sale event for the best time to save on new appliances for your home. This is your time to cash in at Cash Creek Casino Resort to rock and to roll over the hills and bluffs. Go all out or go all in with four stars and rising stars. Now we do more than ever so you can do as much or as little as you want. It's your time to cash in at Cash Creek Casino Resort. Hey, Becky, what about this beat for your next song? Mm, it's cool, but I'm into faster stuff lately, like Xfinity that gives me beyond gig speeds. Got it. What about this then? Mm, it sounds powerful, just like Xfinity. Because its supersonic Wi-Fi has three times the bandwidth, you can connect hundreds of devices at once. <laughs> That's what I call power. Unbeatable internet from Xfinity. Made to do anything so you can do anything. Get the Xfinity Supersonic Bundle with unlimited gig speed internet, Wi-Fi equipment included, and a free 4K streaming box. All for $50 a month with a two-year internet rate guarantee and no annual contract when you add Xfinity Mobile with unlimited data at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash gig, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New gigabit extra internet customers only. Taxes and fees extra and subject to change. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. Reduced speeds of after 20 gigabytes wireless usage. After 24 months, regular rates apply. Requires compatible Xfinity Gateway. Are you looking for a rewarding new career? Join the United States Postal Service and apply for roles nationwide. Serve your community with pride and receive benefits including competitive pay and opportunities for advancement. Whether you are looking for full-time, part-time, or seasonal positions, 
we have options that may be perfect for you. The United States Postal Service is an equal opportunity employer. Apply now at usps.com slash careers. Everything, our farm, our stand, our pop-up shop, it really all started when we discovered the benefits of local raw honey for our family. And then we decided to turn it into a business. We were looking for something to help us get up and running. So we got the Chase Business Complete Banking Account. It's more than a bank account. It comes with Quick Accept, which lets us take card payments anytime, anywhere in the U.S. using the Chase mobile app. Plus, we get same-day deposits at no extra cost. For us, it's more than honey. It's about sharing a little sweetness with the world. Get the Chase Business Complete Banking Account with the essentials you need to help get your business going. Learn more at chase.com backslash business dash complete dash banking. Chase for business. Make more of what's yours. Quick Accept is not available in U.S. territories. Enrollment required. Usage subject to approval. Same day deposits available for payments before 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Sunday to Friday. Fees and rates apply for checking and processing. Limitations and restrictions apply. Participants compensated. Merchant services provided by Payment Tech LLC and WePay Inc. Subsidiaries of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank and a member FDIC. Do you think all premium fuels are the same? Well, your engine doesn't. Shell V Power Nitro Plus helps keep your engine running like new because it's engineered to defend against four main engine threats. Gunk, wear, corrosion, and friction. So next time, choose Shell's most advanced fuel ever. It's fuel for thought. In engines that continuously use Shell V Power Nitro Plus premium gasoline. Finding great candidates to hire can be like, well, trying to find a needle in a haystack, but not with ZipRecruiter. Its powerful technology actively finds and invites qualified candidates to apply to your job. So while other companies might deliver a lot of hay, ZipRecruiter finds you the needle in the haystack. See why four out of five employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. I did a site visit and the space is absolutely incredible. Estes Reiki Clinic is opening another studio across town. But there's a lot to wrap up. But we staffing an entire office requires more than just deep breathing. And at least four new practitioners. Indeed can help them hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. We instantly connect you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. The roar of our engines, the pump of our heartbeats, the pedal to our metal, the sparks that ignite us, the pistons that push us, the passions that drive us. From the feelings that move us to the places that pull us on the roads that unite us. With nearly 6,000 stores and over 17,000 auto care centers, Napa has America's largest network of parts and care. Here to keep you firing on all cylinders. What's your retirement look like? With Fidelity Income Planning, a dedicated advisor can help you create a flexible income strategy to grow and protect your wealth so you can stop worrying about the future and enjoy whatever comes next. Investment minimum supply. Fidelity Brokerage Services member NYSE SIPC. Here's what happened today on The Game. Presented by the County of Santa Clara. The morning roast from 6 to 9. And here we are in year 6. And he still doesn't have a quarterback he trusts. So who who does he trust? Who does Kyle want a quarterback? Willard and Dibs from 9 to noon. My last name is Shanahan. Oh, hey, Kyle, what do you want to do for your birthday party? You're turning six. I want to sit around and design plays. I want to run a zone read here. <laughs> Steiny and Guru from noon to three. I mean, good Lord, Steiny, how long does this guy get? I'm talking about Kyle to get the next Montana or Young. You might have him. And Demon and Ratto from three to six. And Kyle was not concerned, or I should just say he was unbothered by the load management in a running game that Trey Lance was on pace to have. The best of the game, presented by the County of Santa Clara. Book a COVID-19 booster shot now at sccfreevax.org or call 211. Now back to Damon and Ratto. Brought to you by BMW Fairfield on 95.7 The Game. So Trimark has been partnering with independent restaurateurs in Northern California for over 55 years, bringing innovative product solutions to help your hospitality business thrive. Visit TrimarkWest.com. Final segment here, Damon and Ratto. Uh, Ange in Oakland. How are you, Ange? It's been a minute. 
What's up, Dane? What's up, Ray? How you doing, man? It's, it's been a minute, man. How y'all been? We're doing very, very well. I'll tell you, I got Lamar as my fantasy quarterback, so anything he does, I'm all over it this year. Man, only Lamar I want to talk about is Kendrick. Bruh, I'm so disgusted with Lamar right now because man, every time he step out there, he's taking a chance at night ever. He's taking a chance of becoming DeMarcus Cousins. He never got the money he was due he, that he deserved because of injury. He's taking a crazy man, risk. Every, crazy risk, but he just threw for 200 and ran for 100, man. He is something else. Hey, the boy is amazing, and, and he, should get, he should get where he should get, but, man. He... Oh, and your phone is cutting out. It was, it was good to hear your voice. Call us tomorrow, and we have more time to talk. Not right at the end of the show. Well, Mark Jackson is an interesting case because I think he's fo- sort of pieced th- together the fact that Baltimore's not going to pay him what he wants. So I think his idea is I'm going to put up the kind of numbers that will make somebody else pay me what I oh, want. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which means that he is taking an even bigger risk than Kyle Shanahan has been taking. Because if he does get hurt, that's all over. Yeah, he may play. He may play again, but he's going to be a second tier quarterback from there on out. Right, and the minute you're damaged goods, you get looked at differently. But it's yeah, no, it's he is taking, he's making one of the all time risky bets in recent or maybe all sports history. How many MVP yeah. guys just roll the dice? Yeah, not that many. Yeah. And this is you know, I mean, he has the perfectly logical case to make that. If Deshaun Watson got his deal guaranteed, mine should be guaranteed too. Because neither of them have done much in a postseason. Deshaun Watson now has missed an entire year. He's going to miss two-thirds of a second. Um, You know, it's the Jimmy Haslam's lunacy, or maybe human decency, has skewed the quarterback uh, market forever. Scott Harris, the Giants, air quotes, general manager, officially is now off the sinking ship. He is the new president of baseball operations for the Detroit Tigers. He had been in San Francisco for the last three years. He was part of 107 wins. I don't even know what that means anymore, but he is a uh, up-and-coming baseball name for sure, and he just got up and became the president of baseball operations for the Detroit Tigers. So congratulations, Scott Harris. Harris. Uh, What does that leave the Giants? It leaves them with a game at the Rockies. It leaves them with an interesting offseason where there's another hole now that uh, uh, Farhan needs to fill, although everything that was happening was in his mind's eye anyways. Uh, John Bribia tonight, your opener. Mariners and A's. That's happening over at the Coliseum tonight. The A's start a six-game homestand that's going to bring the first-place Mets to town on Friday. And by the way, if you like pitching, Saturday and Sunday is going to be DeGrom and Scherzer. Over at the Coliseum. That's not bad. Did you know that the A's only have one 100 loss season since moving to Oakland? Yeah. No, they've they've been surprisingly successful on the field. Six more losses gets them to 100 on the year. So the goal for Mark Kotze, what's the battle cry? 99, baby. 15 games left. A's need to go 10 and 5 to get to 99 losses, which again is now the target of the entire year. Uh, speaking of targets, historic home run watch continues. Baseball does have a little bit of a problem, though, because the Yankees are going to be playing on Apple TV on Friday. That broadcast is so bad, by the way, it's kind of offensive. Uh, it's also somewhere that no one absolutely watches, and Aaron Judge might pass Aaron Rodgers on Apple TV without an audience. Uh, Aaron Rodgers? Or Aaron Judge. If Aaron Rodgers does it, that's going to be pretty pretty impressive. No, you said Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. But he's not passing Aaron Rodgers. Oh, Roger Maris. Yeah. There you go. There's my... Roger Rabbit. He's trying to get yeah. past Roger Rabbit. Uh, Aaron Judge, he hit a pair of homers over the weekend. He's standing at 59. He is two away from Maris. As we told you yesterday, Pujols is sitting on 698. He's two away from the 700 home run club. Let's say Aaron Judge like wants to break Barry Bonds' record. 
he's got to have a monster couple of weeks here to do it. Uh, he has he has to hit almost a homer a day. Well, only six. He, he would have to hit fourteen home runs in his team's last sixteen games. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Almost a homer a day. Yeah, only six hitters in the history of Major League Baseball have hit fourteen or more home runs over a sixteen game span in chronological order. Albert Bell in 1995 hit 14. Sammy Sosa in 1998 hit 15. Barry Bonds hit 14 in 2001. Troy Tulowitzki, 14 in 2010. Nelson Cruz hit 14 over a 16-game span in 2019. And Kyle Schwarber, 15 over a span of 16 games in 2021. And finally, we got to get this in today because it happened today. Maury Wills passed away. A great Dodger. He was 89 years old, National League MVP in 1962. He stole bases like they were quarters, just left for him on the table. Uh, He won three World Series with the Dodgers. 14-year career, over 2,000 hits, 586 stolen bases. Ray, they don't make players like that no more. They don't let players like that play anymore. And on that note, thank you so much for tuning in. Best of coming up next. Is that what you just told me? I need to tell you this. Tomorrow is a What If Wednesday. And what if I told you Kyle Juszczyk will be joining us at 515. We're looking forward to that. Thanks to Tim Kuhn and Peter King for joining us today. Lucas Grandy, great job on that side of the glass. Ray, average job on this side of the glass. I can say the same for myself. 555. Sorry, you're late. I'm so sorry. Sports don't build character. They reveal it. And like that. 